Happy New Year, Living Soil Nerds 2023. Uh, life is flying by, I think, for a lot of us. And, uh, you know, as the show keeps going on, we're trying to reach out and find guests uh, that you might not have necessarily heard from or even know about. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, uh, we, we spoke with Ryan, uh, you know, buddies with another friend of ours, TJ, just gentlemen that are working hard, creating medicine at a very small craft type level. Um, and, and moving forward into that kind of stuff, understanding that I, I hope that you guys see that, you know, this is attainable for a lot of people that just want to do this at their at their home. Uh, another gentleman that I've had, I've, you know, MJ, I, I, I don't know how to really uh, express uh, how I feel about you other than to say, like, you're, you're somebody that, like, I feel like everybody respects. Uh, you're out there just being who you are, man. Uh, this is a hat that he literally gave me off his head at an expo. Um, so, MJ, there's just something about you, buddy, that I know everybody in Denver feels that way. I mean, I guess, you know, for to kind of express that over a podcast is difficult. But there's a reason why uh, so many people respect this gentleman and, and what he's uh, brought to the community. Uh, he created this Brothers Grow 2. That's his Instagram. I think he's even gotten deleted a few times. So that's, you know, that is what it is. But, uh, you know, the original was just Brothers Grow 2, uh, keeping it simple and just trying to you know, for the most part, get out there. That There's a lot of people out there growing cannabis, uh, you know, not necessarily just, just one type of individual, male, female, whatever color you are. There's just a lot of people out there that are farming cannabis. It's just nobody really wanted to talk about it, especially during that time. Uh, you know, MJ goes back. This, this gentleman is somebody that I've known for a long, long time, seen him at all the different expos throughout the years, coming to even, uh, we had a, like a monthly Denver Normal event that he would be at. Uh, so that takes a lot of time and effort. And he was just always giving back to the community. Uh, and to be honest, he didn't want to really ever, you know, be be in the in the forefront, I guess, Marco. And I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate with that. Uh, but he is a uh, wizard when it comes to medicine. So we're going to talk about farming medicinal plants, farming uh, medicinal mushrooms is that at the forefront, obviously, of this show today. Uh, and we want to kick off 2023 where we're not only taking care of ourselves and all that, taking care of our minds. I think a lot more individuals could uh, benefit from just kind of chilling out on a Sunday and maybe tripping with one of their friends or tripping with their wife or lady, however, you know, just tripping with a, another individual so you guys feel safe about it. Uh, but yeah, there's something eye opening to that. And, um, you know, I reached out to one of the best here in Denver and uh, I want to give it to Marco, but I'm excited for this one, buddy, because of it. If uh, if Instagram was like a street type thing, uh, you know, this dude would be at the top of the list, man. And uh, he deserves he deserves, um, you know, for the community to know that just because you don't have a big Instagram doesn't really mean shit. It just yeah. kind of feels that way nowadays. Yeah, no doubt. Happy New Year, everybody. Appreciate y'all uh, joining us again. I know it's been a little bit. What was two weeks ago? We had Brother Ryan on. Um, yeah, I'm excited about this one, Brian, you know, in my, you know, hiatus off of uh, IG here, you've been holding the weight, picking up the good guests here. Uh, MJ, somebody that, hey, man, I don't know a lot about you, bro, but I'm uh, excited to know what you know. And, you know, like they say, a friend of my friend is my friend, you know what I mean? So uh, shout out to shout out to you for being here. Thank you. And um, just tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you want them to know, man, and uh, and, and we'll get on into this thing. All right, so he's, can you unmute him? There. All right, you're good to go, buddy. Yep. Man, first of all, I want to say Happy New Year to you all. Uh, the Rubber Ducky Isopods family. Brian, let me start with you, man. I met you years ago. The first time I, one of the first times I ever went to a cannabis uh, expo show. You were one of the first faces I saw. Your energy, bro. I said, I gotta, I gotta match his energy. He's good people. And ever since then, man, we've had a uh, a friendship of, uh, of growing, of learning. So we had some happies, we had some down times, some sad times, but all in all, we've been consistent. We're still here, regardless if we have one or a hundred thousand followers. We're still here. So, shout outs to you guys for having me. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, well, you know, it used to take a it used to take a long time to build the network. Um, you know, you'd have to show up to the events because social media might have been there, but everybody wasn't really on it like they are, uh, you know, these last few years. So to really 
build that network would either be hanging out at the grocery stores, kind of like the barbershop back in the day, trying to, to meet individuals and find people that were, you know, in a way looking for you. This was just a, like a way that you were able to, to kind of put up your beacon as like, hey, I'm around. Then as things started to progress in Denver and things started to be a lot less like in the shadows, I mean, things were still legal in a way back then, uh, but you still had to be very very careful and a lot of us you know obviously like to partake pretty hard so smoking in certain venues you would get kicked out of you could get fined if you were throwing that event so there's this place called cultivated synergy that was at the heart you know that was the beacon at least at that time uh for individuals that wanted to come and, and smoke cannabis and learn about that kind of stuff and you know mj space was there uh each and every month and i think that goes a long way into saying like when somebody actually gives a shit about the community they actually show up for the community um and that was kind of the stuff that, that we were working towards back in the day unfortunately that kind of fizzled out uh when that one gentleman unfor uh forget his name jordan's friend got hit by a, a drunk driver and so once we lost the the lawyers because he did everything pro bono so once we lost the lawyer it was kind of hard to to actually have that anymore but uh mj was a huge part of that and i, I want more people to, to realize that because all that stuff's kind of faded away, man. All that work and all those things. Nobody talks about that. Nobody really, you know, it, it's hard to even reminisce about a year or two past. It's just like people are staying focused. So uh, MJ is an OG of OGs uh, here in the Denver community. Uh, and the real uh, secret to his success is, is part of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this gentleman has tenacity uh, in spades. Um, and th there's just something to that when, when um, you know, you could talk to an individual for an hour or two. Uh, and they kind of make an impact on your life. And, uh, you know, that, that was the reason why I accepted his hat and all that. Like, normally I would told him no, but there's just something about this, you know, his little style of movement. Um, and now we're going to actually get into the mushrooms. And I think that's where a lot of us for 2023 could probably find a lot of self-healing. Um, again, the, the, the laws and the restrictions have kind of like come down here in Denver, just like they did back in the day when I was first hanging out with MJ with cannabis. So now we're, uh, I'm able to have him come on the show. Uh, where he feels a little more comfortable talking about uh, medicinal mushrooms. Exactly. So y'all legalize medicinal mushrooms? Or they just chilled out a little bit on the laws? I think it's more chilled out, decriminalized, as we say. Yeah, it's more yeah. decriminalized. It's still in the gray area, like when I, you know, we were first kicking it, man, with cannabis. <laughs> so you kind of got to be a little careful. Don't be stupid. But at the same time, it's not... There's no real prison sentence. They ain't all on your ass over it. Right. I mean, you got to be pretty silly to go to prison over it. Exactly. So, and go ahead. No, MJ, I was just going to say there might be a bit of a delay. So um, I'll just kind of like speak and wait. Uh, but I want to get into let the community, they hear from us each and every week, buddy. Uh, but I really want to get your voice out there and what you've been doing, man, because that med medicinal stuff is is next level. And the fact that you're, uh, you know, an underground uh, legend with it. Uh, I want more individuals to, to hear exactly what you have to say. Not a problem, Brian. Once again, like I said, Happy New Year to everybody that's listening. I appreciate you guys for having me. Um, I want to start by saying this all kind of, you know, started around me uh, having PTSD from being in the military from 1988 to 1992. Went to two Gulf Wars, came back, head a little screwed up, thoughts off, waking up at night, uh, the medicine that they're giving you. I can't afford all this, Brian. I can't afford all that. So I got to figure out a different way for me to heal without going to the VA and sitting in line and waiting for all that. So I decided, you know what? We've been doing cannabis for a while and it's going to fizzle out. That's what my thought was. Uh, and I said, you know what? Let's do something different. So in 2019, I started thinking about doing some mushrooms and I tried it. And one of my buddies was like, dude, you, you can already grow, so why don't you try growing some mushrooms? First time I ever tried it, it was actually a pretty uh, uh, successful event, I should say. Um, I wasn't big-headed about it. I was still humble. Uh, and in fact, that first harvest I got, and I'm going to tell you about it, I, I actually donated all of it but two grams to the veterans at the VA Center off of Koufax here in Denver. So it wasn't for me to go and, you know, make profit off or anything like that. I just wanted to get the word out there and say, hey, this is something that, that's going to help you guys. 
whether you're a veteran, whether you've had some other PTSD uh, ailments or anything that's uh, come across your life uh, in your past or anything like that, this is medicine that works. And I can't put it all into scientific form, but I know that if I take a dose of, 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 you know, some mushrooms that I know that immediately the next, that, that, that same day when I lay down, I don't have to worry about the, those dreams, waking up, sweating and, and all that living in the past from the military or whatever it is that caused it, I should say. So I don't have to worry about that. And my whole goal at that time was, okay, instead of, you know, giving it to the friends, give it to the people that really need it. Not to the people that are like, dude, I tripped hard last week. I know you did. But this person that's laying in bed down at the VA hospital really needs it. So when he gets up out of bed, he can, you know, go on with his normal day and feel, you know, so uplifted, so uh, energized and, and anxiety free and, and no negative thoughts. So going forward from 2019 before COVID, um, now at the point, um, like I said, still staying in my own lane. Um, I'm, I'm really thinking about opening up my own little franchise and I just want to help out whoever needs the help. You got to stop thinking about who didn't help us it, back in the days. You know, what I'm talking about y'all know what I'm talking about. We oh, didn't yeah. all get the support we needed. Oh, okay. Throw that out the window. Let's move on. Support yourself. Get out there and do your own thing. Stop worrying and waiting for everybody else to jump on board. You do your own thing and don't worry about none of that. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You do what you do. So going forward, now we're working into candies. We have hard candy we've tried with the veterans. They like that because a lot of them can't, you know, swallow or they have no teeth or whatever it is. So they suck on some hard candy and they get the same great feeling the next day. Like, uh, like it's, it's like a reset. It's really like a reset in the brain. And I don't know how else to say it, say it, but in my own words, when I'm on it, I feel like I can conquer the world, bro. <laughs> so uh, lately, that's all I've been doing. I'm just reading. Um, shout outs to Paul Stamets and all the other uh, microbiologists uh, out there doing their thing in the fungi world. Um, and I don't know if we talked about any of this back in the day, Brian. If, if we did, it was just very you know, limited. Yeah, I remember... Um... Like I remember going to the uh, Denver Normal. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure you were there, but we went to this like uh, campground. It was like Denver Normal camp camp out, something like that. It was like three hours away. Uh, we all tripped that evening. Uh, we were playing like glow bowling, like all the balls like glue like glowed at night. So I just remember tripping hard and like remembering. And then people found out that I could juggle, and so like everybody was just kind of having fun, um, realizing that and. Those little mushroom trip memories, I think a lot of us would feel the same way. It's weird how like life's obviously going by, but when you trip with people, even people you've known for years, there's something about that memory that sticks out. And I can almost like, you know, close my eyes and relive that moment, excuse me, tripping extremely hard and just playing this like bowling game with everybody, just giggling like, you know, we were like eight year old schoolgirls, and everybody's just having so much fun with it. Um, and that's the real joy that comes from mushrooms, in my opinion. People kind of get, I think it gets a bad rap because some people feel like it's the same thing as acid or something. You know, you can, and again, you have to come in it with a, with a strong mindset of, of what's going to happen to you. Uh, but yeah, man, I think mushrooms are a positive thing. And then if you're really wanting to take your mind to the next level, then maybe acids and DMT and other things would make sense. But mushrooms, for the most part, uh, as long as you don't get crazy with the, you know, take maybe the a little bit or a tenth of a gram, whatever it is that, that you want to start out with. Uh, but yeah, there's there's benefits in even micro dosing, which uh, I think the mainstream media and, and more individuals are starting to find out in the last few years. And that but, is very true. What about um like strains then? So obviously there's different mushrooms. I know one or two, uh, you know, PE, penis envy, like does the, does the type of mushroom determine the trip at all? Or does just your environment and who you're with determine the trip? And then how would, what would you recommend starting out like a dosage? Because some dudes, you know, 
eat half the bag. You got a bag, you're, you eat half, the buddy eat half. Like, what you know, what's the correct way to get into it? Man? it, it just like you said, in, in the cannabis game, uh, they have various amounts of strains. However, in the mushrooms, I found out that there aren't like, you know, four or 500 strains out there that I've seen or known about, but I can't attest for like you've, you know, everyone's heard of golden teacher. Um, uh, we can go like Cambodian, Ecuador. Um, um, and those are all Kibenzis, I should say. And then, uh, we have some stronger ones that I should say that are the, I call ape albino penis envy version one uncut. Um, those have about two times more psilocybin than the other strains of mushrooms we have. So if you're going to go, I would say as a beginner, like I was a beginner, um, I did um, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 of a gram. And it pretty much opened my eyes. I got to see all the colors and uh, it was beautiful. I was energized. I walked the lake a couple times, but, and there's some people that want to say, you know what? That's fine. I don't want to be giggly. I'm ready to go. Let's get there. So, you know, we used to do two Ram Tuesdays at the house, like at six o'clock, like, Whoa, like I'm seeing the carpet move. Uh, I see my buddies. He's got glasses on. He took his glasses off. Like his eye, he blinked his eye kind of like fell down the side of his face. Like I, how do you look at your buddy again? So, yeah, you probably want to start off something slow. Point three. Point three. I'm going to say it one more time. Point three. Less than half a gram. Try it for your first time. And then after that, you can move on up and see how you feel. But I would start with something small, relatively small, so you can, you can gauge up to it. And remember, just because your body might be able to handle it, your mind may not be able to handle the things that you see and, the, and I should say some of the feelings that go on. Yeah, and um, and that's probably going to happen to you at some point. So you can remind yourself of uh, this is just me tripping uh, and this is going to end at some point. And that's why most people also say, like, you know, have a friend there that's experienced with you. Um, you know, if, if you're not doing like a heroic dose, then I think both of you can trip safely if the other person's done it before. Um, and then they just kind of like look out for you if you're doing other drugs like acid and stuff. Um, then that's why they, they're called trip sitters is there's usually somebody that's sober to make sure that people don't kind of like lose. But I've never truly I've never seen anybody do that on mushrooms uh, where they completely like lost it. I've seen people maybe get to that edge and then everybody in the group's kind of like, hey, let's go outside. You know, let's you know, just, I almost think that's the biggest thing. If you're, if you're starting to have an issue tripping, it might be just because you're inside. There's something about that. Like you just want to go out, even if it's fucking freezing outside. Uh, the, you know, sometimes you just want to be outside tripping. Um, and there's, there's really something to that. That's why in the summer and the fall, I, I really try to do that at least once a month. Oh, definitely. And like you said, um, when you get into that, you're in your own, you know, you're on your own little four walls in your own house. You're used to that. You know what I mean? And I think what it is, like you said, your mind wants to see other things and explore other things. And I would say 100 percent, if you're going to be doing some mushrooms, definitely want to be outside enjoying the beauty. We're in Colorado, y'all. Why ain't we enjoying Red Rocks on a Sunday after they get done doing yoga while we, you know, we could just sit up there and enjoy nature. You got to get out outside of the walls. You can't just enjoy what you have inside all the time, especially if we're talking about mushrooms, bro. You want to see all them beautiful colors that you normally don't see uh, on a normal, uh, you know, day to day basis. So I would say get outside and do something. Go walk the lake, get your exercise on. You never know what happen after that. But you're exactly right, Brian. I would definitely say uh, outside. Marco, what is your, I guess I haven't really talked to you too deeply about this. Like, what is your experience with this stuff? Um, well, mushrooms I've tried three times. It's distinctly remember all three. Um, and they were good times. Um, it just so happened that one of the times, I think I told you this story when we were um, <laughs> at, the, at the cannabis event. It was a great night. We were having a good time. But then some drama came our way and we ended up getting into some shit like while you know on mushrooms is like the worst thing ever you know what i mean and so um i've i've been leery of them because 
I just didn't know enough about how much of a dose to take. You know what I mean? Um, and I've had, a, you know, I've tried them with Nikki um, a couple years back. Shout out Garrett Gardens. Um, so, uh, blessed me with a little bit to try. So we just chilled with a small amount. He had these chocolate bars. So we each ate a chocolate bar. That was the first time kind of experiencing it, you know, as an adult, not, you know, a kid running around acting a fool, but just as an adult. And I thought it was great. I did get the kind of the urge that, damn, this is kind of like that. It's kind of like alcohol. Like if you drink too much, you can't really stop it until it stops itself. I kind of felt like, you know, possibly I could run into a little bit of that if I tried too much at one time. So I really want to do, I definitely want to get, you know, into it more. Um, but I want to kind of, that's why I'm talking to people like you, MJ, to kind of drop some of those bombs on, on, on us and let us know. Because I think one of the biggest things, like you say, man, you have to keep telling yourself, hey, bro, I just did this. I'm going to be all right. Relax, you know, enjoy it. You know, I think this mental is, is what I noticed a lot about it. Yeah, and there's, there's like these little loops that you can get in sometimes um, that or at least your friends can get into. Um, and you kind of got to get them out of that. Like uh, an, an example that always stuck with me was uh, we had a friend that wanted to do heroic dose. We, we were doing that. And then uh, he started to puke. And then he said, this isn't fun. And then he goes, this isn't fun, guy. And then because of the fun guy, like mushrooms, he just kept saying that shit. Like <laughs> eventually so annoying that he kept, you know, so you almost have to like get back to him, let him let him go a little bit and then bring him back and be like, all right, man, we, we all hear what you're saying. Let's move on. to something. Let's go outside, you know, because if somebody gets laser focused on stuff like that, especially when they start saying the same shit, I've seen that kind of be like an issue for, for individuals because it seems like they're not handling it as well. Or that's the way I've kind of perceived it. So I would just take them outside or something. So if they're focused on that, like, this is not fun, guy. This is not fun, guy. And then he's getting, like, deeper into the giggles. And then it's getting into the, like, the, you know, there's a there's a bell curve with that. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. with the heroic doses where it's it's fun, 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 fun. Um, but if you get to the edge and just kind of, like, lean over too far, um, people that haven't done that that amount before, I, I've, I have seen that temporarily be a problem where we're th- – with like acid and kind of that kind of stuff. I myself have felt that before where I would like Marco had mentioned, like, I was like, man, how do we turn this shit off? And they're like, turn it off. You still got like another like nine hours. And it's like, Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So that, that part is a little too much. So I think mushrooms is the perfect, like, I, you know, especially if you respect mother nature and you want to get in, we're going to get in obviously into cultivating these uh, on a, on another level so that they're healthy. Um, you know, back in the day, MJ, a lot of us would just be trying to find individuals that knew where cow pastures were and then supposedly picking the ones with purple. That's what our group did and uh, making them. And uh, to be honest, they tasted horrific. They would hurt your stomach. Um, and so that's what I've heard from other individuals that are able to make it at the level that you're at. Uh, that's a lot of that maybe stomach issue stuff can kind of go away from from that understanding uh, the, the different cultivars and that kind of thing. Do you have any experience with that? Uh, are you referring to uh, like kind of feeling nauseous, whatnot, uh, in the intake of, of your mushroom trip? Yeah, well? I, I would. I would. I feel like almost something, maybe like uh, less than half, but maybe close to twenty-five percent or more. It seems like anytime I've tripped with somebody, somebody there is feeling kind of kind of bad at first. And so, you know, you got to help them out or whatever. Uh, we've tried lemon tech, some other things like that. But then, of course, that makes it more powerful. Uh, so there's a catch 22 with that kind of thing. If it's messing up the stomach, but they've never done it before, then you do the lemon tech. It's kind of like, you know, giving them shots of Jaeger before they've even drank uh, a couple beers. You're exactly right. And I will say, um, lemon tech, that since you brought that up, it's immediately within 15, 20 minutes, it's going to be a blast to NASA, bro. You're going straight to the moon on this lemon tech, but it's not going to last forever. Uh, and the good thing about it, the, the lemon or this, what is it? The citric acid in the limit or whatnot is, uh, kind of eaten up. I should say some of the mushrooms. So you don't really get as nauseous. Um, I've read on some of the biology or the, um, uh, like what is the, the mycologist, I should say, they take 
the psilocybin out of out of the equation of the mushroom. They take one part of it out and they leave the in, and it doesn't make you sick. One as many as your body and your mind, I guess, it uh, could can handle without feeling that nauseousness. So I should say one thing to, uh, to do that is I would say. You always hear they say, take it on an empty stomach or, you know, if you eat, if you eat something and then take them, then it's going to take longer. Here's what I say. If you don't feel like your stomach needs to be, you know, feeling uncomfortable while you're trying to go to the moon, then I would say water and eat like four or five crackers. Wait about a half hour, then take them. You don't have to worry about your stomach growling and, you know, that uncomfortable feeling like, oh, man, my stomach hurts and I am high as a kite. Like, I don't know what's going on. My stomach, I don't want to have them too. I want to be able to focus on uh, my healing, I should say, or, or your high or whatever you call it without having my stomach hurt. So I would say drink a glass of water and take two, two or three crackers and then wait a half hour and then go on your trip. What do you so is mushroom something that you will build up a tolerance to MJ like it, it, or is that is it like every time you take it it's just going to be a whole new experience I would say it's a little bit different from cannabis where you can kind of kind of get used to the same you know what I mean whatever strain it is you're doing but I would say yeah. uh in the mushrooms oh man there's uh <laughs> Excuse me. Black. I would say, or excuse me, can you back to say that again? Repeat that because I, 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 I well, I yeah, I'm just curious if you know, like with cannabis, you, you, it, it, you, you gain a tolerance, you know what I mean? If you do use every day, you need a little bit more. It's usually how it is, but is, is, is mushrooms, do they work that way as well? In a sense, yes, they do. Um, with the tolerance, I should say you can't do them every day unless you're doing a microdose and you could take mushroom. You can microdose every day. But if you're going to trip, it has to be you have to give your body a break in between. And yes, it you can build a tolerance if you always take the same amount. Um, it would seem like your tolerance would be, you know, the same. But there are different strains in these. I'll give you an I'll give you a um Example, I got some hillbillies that are a uh, hillbilly strain that's as big, literally as big as apple. And I know if I take a half a gram of that, I'm good. But if I take a half a gram of penis envy, I'm off. I'm off the roof, bro. I'm, I'm done for the day. Calling my boss like immediately telling him I ain't gonna make it tomorrow. Oh, oh, you're already calling for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, like if, if if I take, you know, if you were talking about the tolerance, and I say, okay, right, I just right. want a little trip. I'll, I'll take, you know, I'll take something that I know, Ecuador, Cambodian or anything like that. But if I mess around and take like penis envy a half a gram, then I'm definitely going to call my boss and be like, hey, you know, man, I ain't going to come tomorrow because I know I'm going to be up for about eight to 10 hours on a half a gram. Oh, wow. All right. All right. So then there's, I mean, just with that point alone, man, there's got to be benefits with the, like you said, the micro dose and with just kind of staying alert and active, you know, and it, and it sounds kind of like, it's like cannabis. You got to know kind of what your strains, how it works with your body and, and, you know, when to take it and how much, right? You're exactly right. Got to know how much to take and, you know, more importantly, when to take it. When I say when, I'm not talking about a time of day. I'm talking about in your head. If you got some things that you've been thinking about, something that's you know heavy on you, you that's definitely not a time to be taking no mushrooms because I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. It's gonna be like uh, Brian uh, 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 skateboarding down down uh, Broadway downhill or something like that. You're gonna, it's not gonna be a good sight. And uh, I'll do a quick example about uh, when you have something on your mind, I ain't gonna say anybody's name, but I had a, a two gram Tuesday at my house uh, a couple years back. And I asked the couple people that were there, Hey, are we all good up here in the head? And everybody was like, yeah, except one person. He's like, yeah, but and I was like, well, maybe we should. He's like, I'll be okay. So long story short, we tripped two gram Tuesdays, two, three hours in, he goes to the bathroom. 
and he's in there, which feels like two hours, you know, Ryan, you know, that it feels like you lost uh, time when you're on him, but I had his brother go in there and check on him. He came out and laughed. I went in there. This dude had all his clothes off sitting on my counter with his hand like this, just, just sitting there. And I was like, Josh, you all right, buddy? He was like, man, I knew I should have, just like you said, I knew I shouldn't have took it. Now I'm all head messed up in the head. So, uh, called his brother back, you know, he got, got him dressed or whatever. And then more importantly, clean my damn counter while you got your ass just sitting on my counter like you shouldn't or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they, he took him all the way to Erie, made sure he was good. And, uh, he came back the rest of us trip to like four or five in the morning. And then from there, you know, go to work, get do the whole thing over again and wait for another Tuesday. <laughs> Is that about where y'all are at? Uh, at once a week is good for a trip. I mean, no more than that, pretty much, like for a heavy one. I don't know about Brian and everybody else, but for me, and you know, at my place where we're at now, it's called the Safe House. So I have an assortment of a few people that are trusted that come over, and I would say probably on Friday, and they know we can't do them every day, so they try and gauge the day as I, they're like, okay, what if we do them Wednesday, take a break Thursday, and boom, Friday and Sunday, right on it. I was like, well, let's do it. You know, so um, I would say for a normal, if you want a trip, do it on a Friday. And I would say do it around, you know, three. Don't wait to six because you're going to be up to like four in the morning. I'm just letting you know right now. Uh, I think someone mentioned earlier that uh, you can't turn this mushroom off when it's gone, it's gone. When, when the little pink elephant flies by, you saw that. Yeah, and it's going to keep flying by. Uh, another cool part about mushrooms is that they don't pop up on tests. So if, you, if you're if you a nine-to-five individual uh, and you want to mess around with this, like you said, on Friday, if somehow you got a test on Monday, uh, you know, the test doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So you would be able to uh, pass if, if you tried this or something where if you – you know, even with cannabis, I guess with some companies still to this day, you could potentially lose your job. Uh, a lot of people obviously don't want to try things to relax them, um, but stress will kill you quicker than I think anything in life. Um, and mushrooms is a gift. Um, I guess this is my opinion, but it, it seems like it's that knowledge has been suppressed for so long. Um, and now that the, the information is out there, I think that some of the scare tactics, uh, some of that stuff still out there to kind of like hopefully not get the public where so many individuals are, um, you know, take it two grams. I mean, that's a, that's a nice little jump off the, off the, you know, high dive. And then you can continue to go up. And uh, I think, I believe it was Terrence McKenna that coined the phrase heroic dose. Uh, and when he's talking about that, that is one of those, like go out into the forest that you would have heard about when your kid come back as a man type thing. Um, that's seven grams. Uh, you're going to take that, um, it's usually going to probably take you about 30 minutes. Uh, some individuals, it takes about an hour to get even seven grams down. Um, and then once that starts to take hold, uh, again, it's it's an experience, but there's something to that. And, and there's sometimes with mushrooms, a lot of times with DMT, where you can kind of see the same stuff that a lot of people have talked about before. And for me, that was the aha eye opening moment is all right. Well, obviously we all kind of mentally go somewhere else, but yet a lot of us, if we kind of are venturing into the deeper aspects, doing a heroic dose are seeing some of the same things, some of the same entities. I was wondering, um, MJ, if you, if you've kind of ever experienced any of that stuff, cause a lot of it to me has always been benevolent where it just felt, felt okay. Now, I can say in a test that my first two gram Tuesday, I felt like I was in a new, a whole new dimension. Like it was really hard to explain where my mind and my body was at, even though I knew I was at home. Um, I kind of felt like I was in a whole nother dimension, like seeing the carpet move. That's all normal to me. Um, seeing the wall slide and do all that. That's all normal. But it, something was about, that first time where you said it felt like I was in a whole other dimension, but I think that was just for me to explore and get my mind there to get my mind to that level. But now I should say, if I do two grams today, uh, I don't think I'm going to be in that dimension. So I don't know if I need to take more, um, 
or kind of tinker with where I'm at right now and be okay with where I'm at. It's like, do you know your level you need to be at? Or are you trying to be on the level my boy Brian's at? You know, Brian's going to go and jump off the roof. I might jump out the window, but I might not jump all the way off the roof yet, depending on how much I take. But you know what I mean? So have you ever taken more than two grams? Not yet. But I plan on doing more than two grams. Let's see what's day. See here, I'm already thinking about what day I could this could go down. Martin Luther King Day is Monday. Yeah, this weekend, bro. What's up? I might I might be texting you. I gotta uh, <laughs> drive out for things, but uh, I also kind of want to talk about the medicinal aspects to it. Like, there's something to when you have a nice, healthy trip, and then you're done with that. It feels like you kind of like took a. My best analogy for this has always been like if you took a shower, but that shower was on the inside. And so you feel a little cleansed from that. Like it's 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 something it's a kind of like eye opening to you. You're thinking about other things than the normal stuff you were thinking about before you tripped that day or, you know, in the days before. And then it seems like uh, that kind of thinking lasts for a few days. Um, and then, of course, kind of kind of withers away. And then, you, you know, you choose to do it again and it kind of continues to pique your interest. So much so that it seems like a muscle, like it seems like you can build your mind, if you will, the same way as your biceps uh, by beginning to push those levels. Maybe, you know, you get to like three grams, MJ, uh, with, with good close friends and kind of see where you're at. Maybe now you do three gram Thursdays, you know, you're moving it up. Wow, three gram Thursdays. Have you done a hero dose, bro? I, I've done that twice in my life. And it is... Uh, you grip, you would grip the chairs. I mean, you got to really, that, that that's no joke. But it's like also, a roller coaster ride, right? Like you're going up to the top of this thing ready to, you know. Wow. But I also think that there's a lot of like mental to that. So if you're in a good mood, man, you're having fun, you're with a really close friend or somebody you love uh, and you trust each other, uh, walking outside, it's pretty hard to have a bad trip, even if you're tripping that hard. You might have to remind yourself that like, you know, holy shit. It's just the two of us that are seeing this kind of stuff. But yeah, even in a park, you know, you're going to come across people sometimes. Um, there's a there's an old homie that I used to have. I think you remember him, MJ, Ben Conte. Uh, and we, we would love to do like three, four grams and then walk down uh, 16th Street Mall uh, and kind of feel the energy from the lifestyle that, that comes across with that. And sometimes it would be very positive energy. Sometimes it would be very negative energy. Sometimes dudes would come up and like try to fight us because we would walk down certain alleys. And I'm sure MJ knows what I, you know, there's a, there's a lot you can do in Denver and there's a lot of places you can walk down and choose to walk down. And so we would choose to walk down certain areas. And I'll never forget where this one guy I felt like was going to try to, I don't know, buck up to us or rob us or something. But once he saw our eyes, he goes, whoa, what are you guys on? And the energy <laughs> and everything like everything changed i could i remember seeing it visually like it was almost like he, his hate or whatever he had towards us that went away man and then he was like a, a, he knew y'all were fucked up a He's funny like, uncle or something <laughs> yeah but that's what i think mushrooms might you know more individuals if they were able to just see that life is you know even if we were sober and we're walking through the woods i mean if you really let yourself mind, let your mind go it's pretty trippy that all that shit's popping off in the woods anyway so then when you're able to take it to the next level and have a, you know, an aid to kind of take your mind to that next level, uh, mushrooms is something that I'm, I couldn't be more of a proponent for. I think more individuals should try this, especially if you're used to just relaxing with maybe like depressants. Um, this is this is kind of a, a nice change of pace. And I promise you that you'll feel good days afterwards, too, which is, you know, like on Monday, I was joking right before we came on here. Georgia went back to back. I haven't uh, kind of felt a hangover in, in probably two years or so. Um, but it reminded me of why I don't drink, you know, because it's just if you feel horrible uh, where I've never felt that way with mushrooms the next day. I usually feel uh, fantastic or I, I feel like my mind's on some kind of little like unclogginess. And then, uh, you know, it, it eventually starts to, to feel better. Uh, and there's something to that, man. I, I think, man. Uh, is meant to hang out with dogs. And I think man is also meant to do mushrooms for whatever reason. It seems like it really stimulates uh, the brain. I can add one thing that you were mentioning about the uh, the effects or whatnot that you get from it. Um, you know, I got you guys can both tell me 
you know how what what is your anxiety like when you go somewhere um and you're gonna go and meet someone in some club or someone you've never been how's your anxiety kick in do you sit in the car and wait 48 minutes and, and look around like i do like some jackass like dude just walk in there but that anxiety kicks in and i know that that's one of the just one of the little ailments or whatnot that's uh it helps um anxiety depression ptsd um um some lady told me it helped her with her fibromyalgia i don't know anything about that but i can tell you if it worked hey i'm gonna add her to the list too but uh just you know creativity uh a, a few of my friends are are um uh you know they write they rap and write or whatnot and the only time they tell me the most of the time when they do their best writing is when they're um when they're on mushrooms micro dose you know what i mean of course not they're not partying and hanging out and doing two grams and they sure ain't doing no Superman shit like, like you, Brian. No seven grams. What the hell is wrong with you, bro? Well, no, no, no. To be fair, I worked up to that. Like I, that, took, oh, okay. that took years to to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, maybe I should be clear. Like, if you've never done mushrooms, please don't do seven grams. I mean, that's that's not a good idea for anybody um okay so that's not a good jumping off point yeah but. man that's uh that's like a marathon for your mind right so if you've never if you've never even jogged outside the house before then yeah that's not that's not where it's at that's why i think he was getting to the point of like you know under a gram that might it probably depends on your weight i believe there's charts now even that you can you can see like for that kind of stuff uh but if you want to maybe you want to do a little bit uh you know that that monday or wednesday or whatever kind of like let your body, uh, I don't know, just kind of, it's a, it's a different feeling, I guess, is the best way to describe that, right? So then you kind of feel it. And then by Friday, when you really want to do that and kind of have more of a full experience, maybe do a half a gram or a gram, depending on where you're at. Um, and then you're going to, at least the first couple of times, you're going to more than likely kind of see some stuff. You'll notice that things are brighter. Um, I've always liked to say that the background in life seems to come to the forefront so that the trees and stuff, you're just amazed, you know, the trees exist and you're kind of like walking around. And I know it kind of sounds silly, but if, if you are walking around, and you let your mind go. Uh, this place is unbelievably cool. And, ma and, and mushrooms are, I think, called magic mushrooms for a reason, uh, because you can kind of let your mind, if you, if you choose to, let it wander. And then, uh, you know, the aid of each gram as you as you go up uh, seems to kind of like open up more of those doors. Uh, so you get to pick and I, I highly recommend that you don't do anything over a gram until you kind of gotten a nice base done it a couple times are the caps and the stems equal in uh you know potency or whatever i'll say yes and i can definitely attest to let's say if i just showed you like my thumb and you know if you've seen some mushrooms grow you know that there's a couple on the side or whatnot the little bitty one on the side i can tell you this right now that that big mushroom that's like five inches long and that little bitty one that's a, almost a quarter a quarter of an inch both of those have the same amount of everything in them okay now, what, so sticking with the weight is key then sticking mm -hmm. using that weight as your guide mm -hmm. is weight key. is key yeah. Weight is key. And like Ryan, I want to say that again. Do not take no seven grams. We're not doing all that. We're telling we're telling you about opening up your mind, like your third eye, if you're gonna do what uh, I believe Brian's talking about. And there's actually what is the name of it? There's a special name for that. Uh, where you go out into the woods and they do that. Um, I would definitely say um, if you want to have uh, see some things that good that up feeling. Um, because we tried it this weekend. I wrote down a few things and said, man, I'm driving the next day. I woke up, drove home, drove to work. And I was like, I could not think of one negative thing at all. Not, I couldn't even think of anything in the past. It was like, it cleared my mind from all that. Um, and that whole day I was good until, like you said, as soon as you go and use the bathroom, it's over with. And about a half hour after that, depending on how much you take, it's going to be a whole long day as long as it felt for you to be you know me highs like that the next day is gonna be like oh i'm tired like i need to go lay down or i just oh so you mean you're just physically drained because people don't really i mean your brain creates energy like when it's working it creates heat 
and the energy. So I imagine you're, that's part of what drains you, right? Just the way that brain is working. Exactly. And it doesn't help when you, you take uh, 10 people to Meow Wolf and you sit there and look at all this stuff for hours. Your brain is totally exhausted. It's like, ugh, my brain needs a break. Turn it off. So definitely, I, I attest to uh, saying start off small if you're going to do something. It's definitely going to change your mind. If what we're talking about to, to you all today that are listening, I appreciate y'all once again for tuning in. If you don't learn anything else about what we're talking about right now, go ahead and try this for your, your time. Try it. Please try it. And you right now, how you feel and how it made you feel the next day. You can go back and listen to this podcast again and be like, you know what? They were right. Like, man, I felt great the next day. You know what I mean? I felt great. I was able to, you know what I mean? Good move forward. Like, I felt like I could conquer the world on this. Like, it was like, I felt like Superman. Like, dude, you can't tell me nothing I can do on mushrooms. Like, please. Like, it built my, it built my tolerance. It built my, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, my positivity, my positivity, uh, whatever however you said, I just felt like giddy, happy, and just totally energized, bro. You can't tell me I can't, I can't do what? I, I'll, I'll fly this plane from here to LA, bro, on some shrooms. And my mind saying I could do it, but my body's like, bro, what are you doing? Get my point? Yeah, definitely, man. The mind is very powerful. You know what I mean? Somebody in the chat just said, you know, blind people can see color, you know, on some studies off of and shit like that so um definitely man the mind is very powerful now let me ask you a question there, sir the last time you took some did you take uh did you take them in the mushroom form did you take them in a pill did you take them in candy chocolate how was how did you ingest i ingested in the chocolate bar the last time it was like a little hershey bar with the squares and um, okay. I had like half a square starting out. and But I tell you, we, and then I went to a square and that was kind of where I'm at. And I think I still have them in the freezer. Um, but I, I didn't notice it lasting. I think I noticed it lasting about six hours. And it, and it cut off like a light switch when it did go off. It was weird. That was the cool thing about it. I was like, damn, that, it wasn't like drinking because I was like, oh, shit, when's this going to end? And which is why I don't drink very, very little either, bro. But um, yeah, and then all of a sudden uh, um, you're just watching, you know, TV or whatever, and it just cuts off. And like you said, Brian, you did kind of feel it was like you felt like lifted, like you know, helium was in you, kind of just light, you know. And I did get that feeling out of it, you know. You can um, uh, sometimes you can almost feel like uh, in your spine, like in the back of your your neck, uh, on your head, like when you're truly tripping. It's like I don't know. There's like um, it's not it's not goosebumps. But it kind of feels it's a different energy. It almost feels like an energy uh, that's kind of going through your spine. And I've never I've never had that like every single time when I've done that. But I have seemed to have that happen more often than than not uh, when you do kind of get into the heavier doses. So I don't know if that's kind of like your body's resonating. Uh, I've heard from individuals that, it, it you know, your body reacts by uh, increasing your temperature um, so th that kind of affects certain things. And that's why some people have claimed that it's dangerous. Uh, but I've never, I've never seen anybody, like I was saying, like if you respect it, um, it's, it's more of an eye opening, self-reflecting, uh, internal shower cleansing, um, tool. And that's why I think, uh, you know, we wanted to kick off 2023, uh, with having MJ on here first, because, uh, I didn't want you to back out because you're, you're the homie, dude. And, and I, I'm so happy that you, you're you on here, man. And I, I wish that we were able to show like the love that the community has for you, uh, just in the way that you were for, you know, meeting up at all the expos. Like people are just so happy to see you, myself included. Um, and, then, and then I would imagine now kind of moving forward, man, um, these mushrooms and the way that you're, uh, you've, I, I know that you've gone through a lot of stuff since then you know, we've even hung out. So uh, the, the medicinal aspects for, for men going through things, um, I think I can't, you know, talk about enough I, for individuals because you're allowed to kind of go internal. Uh, a lot of guys don't, you know, the shit that they're dealing with, they don't want to necessarily share that kind of stuff. Uh, and mushrooms is another way that you can go internal, especially on the lower doses. You, 
it's not like you don't have control of your thoughts or something like that. I, I want that to be clear. Like you're, it's not like you're drunk and you don't really know what's going on. It's more just um, you might see some stuff like like our, our I guess the carpet is probably the cla the classic example, right, MJ? So carpet like, moving, bro. Yeah, and then the couch may be kind of swaying, and the, the walls are moving a little bit. And just remind yourself that you know that that's what you want it to do, uh, right? You know? So that that part is kind of um, I wouldn't use the word scary, but it's just kind of different. And then once you've had that feeling of tripping before, uh, most people really enjoy it. And like Marco had even mentioned, he's done it a, a handful of times, uh, but he remembers them vividly. And that's how I kind of felt like I started off the show. I and mean, there's there's certain times where you just remember things that it's almost like your mind can took a, a fantastic snapshot of that uh, when you were tripping. So you can kind of go back to that, remember those memories. And I don't know what that's all about, uh, but there's something kind of cool with being able to to kind of remember that almost like on a photographic memory uh, that that evening when you're tripping that hard. I did read, you know, when you do these mushrooms, they actually build your synapses in your brain. Like they make new connections and things like that. So definitely that makes a lot of sense. Um, I agree, man. I think the key would be like, like you said, start with a buddy, start with someone that's experienced, like, because just doing it the few times I did, I realized it's very powerful. You know what I mean? And I'm the kind of guy I don't want to be like out of control. You know what I mean? Necessarily, unless it's just chill. You know what I mean? I don't you know, want to be like sloppy drunk or can't defend myself type shit. So I think that is key to um, be with somebody you trust and that knows kind of what, what to expect. So they tell you, man, just chill. That's how it's supposed to be. Or the carpet, wait till the carpet moves. That's going to be cool. You know, or what, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, good stuff, man. And I can tell you this, a couple of people have asked me, um, you know, on the lines, what should I expect? Like they, like you said, you know, Marco, once you, you tried the whatnot, it, like it, the light switch, like, boom, I'm done. It's over with. Um, I think the, 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 the newcomers or the people that haven't tried them lately or haven't tried them for their first time, their thing is, what you know, what am I expecting? And I, my only way to, to, to make this, you know, uh, impre this impression in your mind is to say, look, don't sit here and wait for it to happen. Just sit there and do your normal stuff. So when we to my house, we usually plant Uno. We got the big cars of Uno. We're all just sitting around playing Uno. We, you know, we all have everything written down, who took what at what time. So I'll always know who took what and, you know, can kind of gauge who's doing what. But, yeah, you don't do anything extra. You don't sit there and wait for it and go, oh, here it is. No, you'll know when it hits your stomach and you your stomach feels like you drink a cold water in the morning, it feels a little uneasy. And then, you know, a few minutes after that, it's like, oh, wow, this is what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah I agree. I think that's, that's a bar right there, man, because do just do go throughout your day. Don't sit there and wait on it. That's key right there. That's why I threw that bar up there. You know, if you got something planned, I would imagine just start doing the shit and then just let the, let the shrooms come to you, right? But well, we should put a caveat on, on that because if you start tripping and you're in public, that's probably going to give you anxiety. Like that, that's that's almost another thing of where, what you try to work up to. Like I remember back in the day, we would trip pretty hard and then try to go play poker at this little uh, place we used to play at um, and try to outthink people and all that stuff. And it, it took a while to build up to that to even be tripping that hard in public. So um, there, there's a lot of like little variables with this just to make sure that you're doing it doing it right, doing it safe. Um, and if you do have anxiety, I feel like that might uh, enhance it, especially the first time you're doing it, where if you're out in the woods, uh, you're not going to have that issue. So your experience is going to be dramatically different, uh, especially if you're more of like an introvert. Just go out, go out in the woods with a friend. That's interesting you said that, Brian, because I was wondering like if it could be used to like dial into a task. And so for you to say poker, so aside from kind of the overall anxiety of everybody, were you able to kind of dial in anything with it and get some like for say, man, I can use this or was it just going to be just too much with the anxiety and stuff? Man, I'm, I'm going to probably overshare this, but I, I hope that people see that this shit is weird, right? So when I'm in public, I can't pee in public. Like I have a problem with that shit. And I discovered one time when I was tripping uh, that if I say one, two, three, 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 for whatever reason, I'm able to do that. 
And I discovered that tripping. And ever since then, whatever used to block my mind from being able to do that. Now, if I do that little extra one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, I'm able to do that. So like when I go to the mall, I can go to the, you know, go into the restroom beforehand. I would always just wait. I always had like this weird phobia, I think when I was a little kid. And so it, it like, I know that's like probably an overshare, but it, it was something that mushroom yeah, somehow fixed. And it was a problem for me because, you know, there'd be times where I would prefer to like go pee behind a building than go and, and pee, you know, in a, in a public restroom. Um, so that fixed that phobia or whatever the fuck it was. So if you have some weird little thing like that, I think you'd be able to find a way to fix it. Um, that obviously normally I would never fucking share with anybody. Um, but I'm sharing that with you because it, it it was one of these things that I worked my whole life, even in college bars, the whole thing, man, where you're sitting there getting hammered drunk. It was always just some fucking weird problem that I had until I was. So you would just piss out. You could piss easily behind the building or whatever. hundred okay. percent. But if, yeah. and especially in the troughs, like in colleges where you're sitting next to me, we're all, I don't know, man. It just always gave me uh, the willies, you know? Yeah. The no. troughs are always a little weird, you know, man. I can feel you on that. I can yeah. I'm gonna add in something you just said there, Brian. When you said it just does something for you where you can block that out, and I'm gonna add to that because I don't I don't like using the um, the restrooms in public, you know, at all, all if I don't have to. So uh, on a two gram Tuesday, that first time I was telling you about we did two gram Tuesday, dude. I live across the street from Seven Pit on Jewel and Kipling, okay. Why tell me why we walked to 7 Eleven, bought a, like $18 worth of junk food and all kind of bullshit? Tell me why I went and used the bathroom and dropped one, dropped a deuce, and came right on out like nothing happened. What was I thinking about? And then I told my friend, he was like, What are you doing? He's like, You would never told me that one. He says, Two, you would never go in that bathroom. You would wait. And I was like, You're right. I don't what it is so going back to what brian said i don't know what it is man but it, it like i said it feels like i'm superman when i'm on it i ain't got to worry about uh anything um i feel like i said i can feel like i can conquer the world with them it's like i you have to experience this people and, and, and some of the people that are listening how many grams have y'all done that that made y'all feel that great or what did you see what are some of the things you saw and what are the benefits that some of you guys had out of it i mean marco and, and Brian definitely have some stories to tell. And, you know, I have a few to tell myself. Um, but um, so I, I wonder if you could, it, you know, sorry to cut you off, MJ. I was just thinking, um, you know, you know, cannabis people got to get that point out before you forget and shit. Um, but um, I was just thinking if you go into the, the trip with a task, you know, hey, man, I know I'm uh, you know, whatever it may be like, I don't like to do X, Y, Z kind of go into that with your mind already thinking about that and maybe that is something that you know you can work through an issue with i'm still wondering how you got to one two three like you know what i'm saying how that clicked for you but that's it who knows right <laughs> yeah i don't that's what i'm saying man it was like whatever was blocking it that's yeah. what i started to do and it started to work and i use that shit to this day Grand like if I'm, like if I'm traveling and with my kids and they gotta pee every 15 minutes it feels like you know <laughs> I, I hate going into public stuff just because it's, I don't know. I don't, maybe you Fucking think about nasty. it too much. Yeah, man. I mean, people are, people as like a whole are gross, you know, and you're, you're probably gross to your, le whatever your level of comfort is in your own home, but in public areas and stuff, it's just, it's just gross. I think to a lot of people. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of phobias and stuff. I think that come from a variety of things. Stress, I think is probably the biggest thing that I would think most people would benefit from. Uh, being able to trip and kind of let go of their mind um, and and learning, maybe relearning how to do that. Kind of just realizing that, you know, I'm out in the woods for a couple of, you know, like like Margo said, six hours. Hey, buddy, that's a good trip. You know, sometimes they only last like two, three hours. It's going to again, there's too many variables for that to really uh, it depends how big you are. You know, Marco's a huge dude. So if you give three grams to like your tiny girlfriend, uh, that's going to dramatically change the whole experience. So you got to really do your homework before you do this. And then once you got it dialed in, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you know, uh, you, you know what you can kind of handle. And then once you experience that for some individuals, they like to kind of push it a little bit. Um, and like I had mentioned, like just because you did a heroic dose, that doesn't mean that you're going to start doing that every weekend. I think sometimes when you push kind of go through the veil a little bit, 
uh, you come back and you're like, all right, I I'm cool with that for a little while. Um, and, and that's fine too. And, and I felt that way because there's, there's just some things that I don't know. I don't know if my mind was ready to handle it. And this, this was a while ago uh, when I was doing that much. But, but so you kind of just need to know where your mind is at, you know, and what, what you're open to. Um, and that's only you internally are only going to know that. So that's why you start off super, super slow. So you don't accidentally scare yourself. Like you said earlier, it's definitely, um, <laughs> it's not like drinking, like, you know, it's waiting for it to happen. You can just, you know what I mean? It's not definitely like cannabis where you can just uh, like I take one more hit and I'm cool. I'm, you know, I know where my level is going to be. It's a little bit different. If you don't start off small and you just say, you know what? I'm going to try two grams because he said two gram Tuesday. Don't do that, please. Build your tolerance up. I would say start off with something small, maybe. I don't know if you guys can see this or if I can show this, but I would start off with maybe, you know, 0.3. Point 0.3, point <laughs> that's where I'm at. You is that where you're at, Marco? You, no, you sold me on the point three. The next, the next go is point three, because I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna weigh and go, go with that weight and kind of work it up, like you know, like you guys said. Because I like things that are predictable. You know, you, you know, you smoke your whatever. That's predictable. You know, I, I don't want to be like not knowing. I at least like to know kind of. All right, here's where I'm going. Let's go. You know, and then I'm cool. Definitely, like so, you said, I would definitely try to do it going in with a task. It worked for you, Brian, in, in your situation with the one, two, three. What, who's to say it won't work for you, Marco, in something that you want to try? Or you with you and your girlfriend go drive? You don't like hiking or, you know, touching animals or whatever it is that you don't like. Maybe there's an experience waiting for everybody that we just don't know about. Now, driving is how's the how about driving? Is that I'm sure that's very uh, unrecommended. Or what do you what y'all's experience on that? Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say drive on that no. ever, really. Because you're going to, it's kind of the same way with being drunk. I got it. I'm cool, you know. But when I'm you good. get, when you get somewhere where it's not like, like if you're at a, if you're at the place where everybody's tripping and for whatever reason you're going home and it's just you and your buddy and you hopping to go to like a Waffle House or whatever the hell it is back in the day, right? Huddle House, all these little 24 hour breakfast places. You walk in there, you're going to, it, everything's gonna re kick in. It's like, holy shit, we are <laughs> fucked up compared to everybody else. Um, and, and you're not gonna remember that when you're driving. So that, and I, I also would think that if you got pulled over, um, you would be, your heart would be pumping so fast, your eyeballs are gonna be as big as saucers um, that you're gonna get yourself into some major fucking trouble, you know, without probably even realizing it. Telling the cop, oh man, I'm seeing colors. And a lot of people react in a, in, in a different way. Um, so yeah, I, I would think that. Yeah, you get pulled over and bust, bust out laughing in the cop's face. That's not going to go too well. Yeah. Definitely not. You know, he's at the car. Roll, you know, knock, knock, roll the window down. And you roll over and look at him and laughing. He's like, yeah, they're done. Whatever they're doing, they're done. When you roll yeah, that window down, he sees your eyeballs. He's gonna step back like, oh yeah, these dudes right here. Whoa, <laughs> what are y'all doing and where y'all coming from? There you go. Great advice. But like you said, if you do get pulled, don't drink, don't do none of this stuff. Don't you do have none an Uber, of this. You're supposed to enjoy this at home or outside in the nature. And you, you talking I mean, about if, if you had to. Go ahead, Brian. I'm sorry, MJ. It was a uh, it was delayed. I was just saying, like, I wanted to get the point across. Like, it's obviously easy to get an Uber or something. There's no reason to chance that the same thing with drinking. Um, it's, it's, you're under the influence and especially when you're first starting out, um, you know, you're, it's, you're newer to it. So you're going to think you're okay. And like I had mentioned, if you ever think you're all right, just, or if you, if you're out and about, just walk in a place where everybody's sober or, you know, decently sober and, and see you're, you're still feeling that you're still, even, even after hours and hours have gone by, I promise you, you're still under the influence of that stuff. Um, and eventually you'll get to where you could probably decently drive safe but now, again if you got if you got pulled over with the saucers I worked, uh, I what, came back yeah you wouldn't want to even risk getting pulled over it ain't even about, no. you know not even about like nothing's a, a crime but the crime is being a dumb motherfucker and killing somebody or you accidentally hitting somebody or you know so that's what we're that's the point we're trying to make here uh for the for the smart guys in the chat yeah this is a this is something this is a planned out 
drug if you yeah, if that's the way you're viewing it right it's supposed this is to be a plan out at home you know what i mean yeah you're 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 gonna you're gonna think seeing some things through when you for your night for this it's not like all of a sudden hey i just uh did a bunch of mushrooms um and if you if you choose if you like if you're drunk and you do mushrooms i've seen that before where it doesn't really even affect them that much but they're puking or they have the the other way um so you kind of need a, a clear mind in my opinion like mj brought up a clear stomach. Um, I, I would do it on an empty stomach. I've seen people where they were eating like cereal and stuff beforehand. That's, you know, they got the milk from the da dairy is horrific for that. Even just a bowl of milk. So really think things through when you're, when you're doing this. And uh, if you're into intermittent fasting or something, that'd probably be fantastic to be able to, to fast out like 16 hours. So you're getting into the autophagy level and then take those mushrooms uh, they're going to, to help you with that microbial level. Um, it might be, you know, it might, it might, there might be some issues, you know, kind of going through the system a couple of times, but I promise you that things are improving and it's definitely worth going through that. Uh, Cause then you're going to feel so much better. Uh, and then uh, like probably MJ, I would love to get into more of the growing aspects of about feeling better. I was thinking the same thing, man. Because you, you okay. kind of, again, you have this, you have a weird energy, man. Like a, there's such a positive energy. Like if everybody's on like whatever, a hundred, you just hover at 125, bro. And everybody realizes that. And it's, it's just contagious. So moving into now that you're creating this medicine, uh, you know, especially when, back in the day when we were talking about living soil and at the, those little events and all that kind of stuff, a lot of people were having problems. And now moving in now that Denver's more like relaxed, the rules and all that kind of stuff, people are still having problems, but now it's in the, uh, you know, the, the world that you seem to be just dialed in at. So we'd love to hear some, we, we call them gold bars on the show, man, where you just kind of give some people some gold nuggets to minimize the, the stress or the overall, um, you know, roller coaster of trying to grow mushrooms. Cause there is a, a pretty big learning curve with this. You can fuck it up very easily, uh, especially when you're first getting into it. That's true. I, I can attest to that. Um, uh, and I, first thing I wanted to, do is to say, uh, and then I'll lead back into that, is uh, when you do get your your mushrooms, make sure they're from a reliable source. Don't get them from the middleman. You want to know somebody that's growing them, for one, so you know what you're looking for. And I, all mushrooms are good. It's like 80% of the mushrooms found outside are not good for you. So I would say uh, just because they turn green and blue, uh, when they're bruised, when you touch them, they bruise uh, very easily. Uh, when they're fresh, uh, I would say uh, watch out where you get them from. Now, now uh, go to a reliable source um, and uh, ask them, you know, ask them questions like you would if you're going to a cannabis store. Uh, you know, what were they grown in? You know, what, you know what, what, what's the process? If they can't tell you what the process is, maybe they're the middleman and they're just trying to make a quick buck. But you're going to need to get with someone that's going to want to uh invite you in you know what i mean like i met brian uh years ago and as soon as i met him i was like that's dude, that dude is coming to my house and that that happened we, we talked about that but find out where you make sure you got a reliable source where you get shrooms from now that's legal you're not going to get them at no dispensary or nothing like that um so make sure you know where you're getting them from get them from uh someone that you trust um and then uh go moving forward if there's something that you want to do um don't you need to stop listening to me say the negative about oh you have to have this and you have to that no you don't have to not have, to have none of that i don't have a budget to do none of this but i started with a hundred dollars and it, it kind of worked out um i was able to um uh, i found a good uh source of spores um that deliver to colorado or uh, i should say they only don't deliver to three states currently right now <clears throat> Uh, Georgia's one of them, California, somewhere in California, and I think it's Idaho or something like that. They don't deliver to or something. Uh, but I would get a uh, get somewhere where you can get some spores. And then once you get some spores, I should say the spore is actually the mushroom. It comes usually in a couple of different ways, a vial, but the most ways times you get it is going to be in a syringe. You get your a spore in a syringe, and then after from that, at least you have a beginning. And then from there, you're going to need something to inject the spore into, which is usually like a spawn bag, which is like berries or something. Um, 
you can spend money on that or you can do the route that I did and just go and get you some uh, corn from uh, Walmart for two damn dollars, two pounds, get three of them, boil it for an hour. I boiled my corn, put it in some big mason jars like you see that's in there. I let them dry. Then I injected two to three cc's into this jar with my corn. Okay. Remember Jerry. Jerry. The corn? Uh-huh. Let me jump in right there. Do, so when you do that corn, you let it dry, air dry all the way out till it's dry? Or what do you mean by that? Explain that uh, a little bit more. Meaning after I boil for an hour, mm -hmm. I got a big pot that I use, like you boil gumbo or something in. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd let it take it off the heat and then pour all the corn into like a strainer, like a spaghetti strainer or something big where all the water can fly out of it. And then I just, every five or 10 minutes, I'll go and like shake it up. So all the, uh, all the excess moisture comes out of it. And then I'll just let it sit literally for an hour until I don't get, when I shake it, I don't get no more moisture. And then after that, I put it in the mason jar all the way up to about, you know, two inches from the top. And then I'll put the top on it with the lid backwards. So the lid will go this way. If it's never sealed, it needs some air to get in there so you can let that ex uh, excess moisture out. So I would say I'd let it sit in there for like two days. I'll shake it every few days. You know, every day I'd shake it up just, you know, to make sure the moisture is gone. Of course, I'm going to have a little condensation in there. I'm just making sure that there's moisture inside the kernel. Once that's done and after two days, now I can inject that into my, I can inject the syringe into this jar of corn that you just made for an hour okay you only spent like six dollars on this versus going to buy some bags for 30 bucks now i'm trying to save you a few dollars because we ain't all got the money to do all that um so after i inject this jar i'm gonna wait like two weeks it's gonna start turning white which is what we want we want the mycelium to grow and take over the whole thing of corn now, is that jar off. sealed at that point after you inject and then you, you go sealed? It's the same way it's staying. Same way? Okay. Same way. I have it the same way. I injected it, put the cap back on it, and I just, I kept it tight like that. Just as, you know, not real tight, but just tight enough. But because the lid is the other way, it's never going to create a seal. So I'll still be able to get a little, you know, something will be able to seep out if it can. Gotcha. Um, at 30 days. Maybe 30 days, this whole jar turned white, okay? So here's the important part. If this jar doesn't turn white, there ain't no magic in the mushroom, dog. So from there, once this turns white, now all we have to do is add, like Brian was talking about earlier, some kind of substrate, where it be some cow manure, horse manure, or whatnot. I use what, what is called substrate, which is sterilized dirt. Um, I can make it, but I prefer to buy the bag because I want to make sure it's guaranteed sterile, uh, hundred percent sterile. So uh, I'll add my jar of corn to this bag of substrate, which is sterilized dirt, and I'll seal the bag. Okay, and I'll just put that in the shelf where it's dark somewhere. Okay, so all what I'm doing now is I'm going to mix that bag up because I want the spawn or the corn that we use that's in that jar to mix with the substrate, which is sterile dirt. We're going to mix those two together. And now together, the whole bag is going to turn white. If the bag doesn't turn white, there's no magic in the mushroom, dog. So once the bag turns white, the only thing we need to do to make mushrooms grow, there's two important key uh, things for them to grow. One is air, oxygen, and the next thing is light. We don't need to get no big, fancy grow light or anything. We just need to get a nice bulb that we can plug in somewhere and have light shining, and preferably a blue spectrum, because that's the best spectrum to grow mushrooms in, okay? Once we are done with that, we've mixed our bag and our spawn. They've turned white. We took them out of our drawer or wherever it was dark, now we took them into the light and where there's air movement or whatnot. All you have to do now is open the bag 
air is going to mix in with the, uh, you know, the spawn and the, uh, the corn and mushrooms will start to appear. But before they appear, you're going to see a pin, which this is like a, a top of a pin. They're very, very small. Once the pins appear, then you know that the mushrooms are going to come in after that. And all you have to do is make sure the sides of the bags have condensation so you can use a spray bottle. A couple sprays two times a day. We got mushrooms going, buddy. That fast. It's that easy. And more importantly, let me say this. You have to be very sterile. So I'm always, I always have two pair of gloves on. I wash my hands. I took a shower before I even started doing any of this. And I only wear the same clothes I do when I when I inoculate and mess with mushrooms. I wear the same clothes every time. Only. I'm trying to reduce all my contamination. I don't want my bag to turn green because if it does, I have to throw it away. That is not good. Let me say it again. If you do all this and you're waiting for your bag to turn white and it turns green, it's contaminated. Throw it away, dog. We don't need that. Throw it in your compost. Thank you. Thank you. Throw it in your compost. Good description, man. That makes a lot of sense, man. I've grown um, pink oysters, some king oysters before. Similar, but I like to uh, see what the... Um, with these magic ones, they like the um, the the earth, the soil in there. Um, can they grow like on a you know uh, a grain type substrate as well, as long as it's sterilized? Or do you like you like that bag with that soil type mix in there? I like the bag soil mix uh, more like because it's more sterile than anything. Uh, however, uh, when I'm just using my spawn bags. I prefer I'm going to I'm going to save some money somewhere. So if I'm going to spend thirty dollars on this bag, you can believe I'm going to spend a few dollars on everything else I need to do, which is only one other thing. So when I told you about the corn, I'm going to throw I'm going to blow your mind about this. Everybody knows Uncle Ben's rice, right? The 90 minute rice bag. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The boiling bag. Yeah. Inoculate that bag. So you can put a piece of uh, that. Mike, I forgot what the micro spore tape or whatever it is and you can inject that white bag i mean excuse me you can inject a uncle ben's 90 90 second bag of rice is that that easy bro i like saving that money that's key definitely yeah because a lot of people are not going to spend a thousand dollars for a hood and when i, I say like the hood, maple jar I mean, that saves you right there because if not, you got to buy those bags with the micro patch. You know what I'm Yeah, the ones you're saying. Yeah. Exactly. How much are mason jars? $15, right? Use them your whole damn life. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. What, what about like bird seed tech? I used to see people using that. Do you think, is that like saying back in the day now, you know, the mush, mushroom cultivation has gotten to this point. This is what you should do. So just focus on this. If you're new, or is there still a variety of ways that are that people should grow this? There are still a variety of ways you can grow this, but let's look at it this way. Um, I, I'm on a budget, like everybody else should be. All that going to Taco Bell and the lunch, y'all should be bringing a lunch to work with y'all. Let me just say that. But yeah, I'm on a budget, so I'm gonna spend. I'll go and get ten bags of Uncle Ben's rice. Do that versus going to spend thirty dollars on one bag. And it go bad or something. Yeah, These are man. like OG little hacks here. Exactly. You know? And that's kind of why, you know, some of the way I guess some of us grew up, you know, that is the way that you would learn stuff is that people would have it so dialed in. This is how you do it. This is how you grow it. This is how you sell it. This is how you never have it on you. I mean, there's there so many different ways that people could teach you stuff. Um, and then once it's tried and true, uh, it sounds like, uh, MJ, that you're able to have this skill set, obviously, for life. And, and as you continue to improve on it, um, you know, you're going to obviously get better and better flips. Is there something to, I know you were saying the bruised aspects. And I remember like when I go to like underground Atlanta and shit and trying to meet people that were trying to meet somebody like you, to be honest. Um, they, all right, what, what you want, white boy? What's up, white boy? And I'd be like, I, I want the stuff with the with the purple rings. And you'd go down there and, and individuals had that kind of stuff. Sometimes it would be like a little bit of, of, of a bluish color. Sometimes it wouldn't necessarily be a ring. It would be more of just like it seemed like it was through the stalk, through the, the cap. 
is is any of that is there any truth to the fact that that's where the the medicine aspects was so if you're eating more of the the bruise you're gonna trip harder or is that just people in the hood trying to trying to you know sell sell it the way that they wanted to sell it bruh it's just like back at the cannabis game and whatever the top strain is and you were going to go get some weed from somebody guess what he had that strain but he you know he he wasn't true to the game about it you know what i mean he was just like he knew you needed it. oh i got some just so he can make a buff but that if you didn't have it you should just say it i didn't have it is my point but uh yes i think they were just doing that as a selling point brian they was just trying to be hey, so they were just bruising it because i was i was dumb telling them what i wanted Instead of saying, hey, what y'all got? I was over here being like, what y'all, you know, purple stems. That's what we're after. Oh, yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Here it is right here. Check it out. The hood got that. Whatever you want. The, uh, somebody's got it. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right, right? Um, I used to hear all the time, man, the, the cap, the cap uh, is good for, for you know, the, the, the seeing these and, and the, uh, the stem is more for body because it's connected to the dirt. And I was like, huh? It has the same amount of psilocybin it does in the cap than it does in the stem. So, and, and I'm probably saying uh, something that you probably didn't understand. Psil uh, psilocybin. Uh, psilocybin, there's two components mainly in a mushroom, psilocybin and psilocin. Psilocybin is when you ingest it. Uh, that's the psilocybin part of it. The psilocin part of it is the part that has been uh, extreated, you know, or, or digested or whatnot. That is the part that is responsible for those. Oh man, did you see the carpet move? That's that part of it. So yeah, I would say <laughs> um, it's a selling point. They was trying to get you on dog. Next time, tell them, hey, if it don't look like this, I don't want it. I'm sure they won't come up with it. Well, I was I was very naive back then. You know what I mean? I, and that's why I was saying there are certain people in my life. There's one dude named Gone, this other dude named Roderick. Uh, they were looking out for me because they saw me trying to achieve something, but I was uh, didn't didn't have the right uh, blueprint, and I was riding around with stupid stuff. You know, I was just being really stupid. So uh, I think there's a lot to learn from that. And now here we are. You know, obviously, probably two decades later, and we're able to have a, a podcast about uh, a mushrooms. You know, and, and taking it to the next level. Uh, of where it's actually like a medicinal thing for not only yourself, but hopefully for your family, especially people that uh, are addicted to certain aspects. Uh, cannabis and mushrooms seem to be able to alleviate some of that stuff uh, for some individuals. More for some than others. You're exactly right with that. Um, I say the mix with both uh, mushrooms and cannabis is powerful, bro. And I'm sure you can both attest that uh, once you're on mushrooms, it's like they they complement anything, bro. I can drink. It's like I don't even drink. I, I could sit on a beer probably for four hours before they like, damn dog, you gonna finish that or what's up, bro? But yeah, um, <laughs> once you're you're there, you're there on it. It's not no um, what is it I should say? What's the word? It's not really a turn back. So once you're 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 cruising, I would say just keep cruising. Don't. Don't turn back. Don't listen to other people. Um, be around people that are happy. Don't be around the people that are creating stress with you when you're going to be doing the mushrooms or whatnot because it's not going to be a good experience for you. So what are like what are the numbers like on on that man? Like as far as just you know market wise, we talk a lot about um, you know entrepreneurship and everything. And obviously, you can't get that at a dispensary. Um, and is it better for you? You know, I see a lot of people going to chocolates and candies. Is that a better option or people want more of the you know, raw shrimp? Uh, I have a mix of a couple different uh, family members and a couple of veterans and whatnot that they like the mushrooms, but they don't like the taste, man. They taste like 10 burnt sunflower seeds and eight aspirin eaten, chewed up at one time. I ain't playing. I'm telling you, they do not taste good. Am I lying, Brian? You know what I'm talking about, Marco. That, they don't taste good. That's why Lemon Tech was was developed, in my opinion. Because yeah, that that was no one wants to to taste that. Hard, hard to get down, even in a chocolate form. That long. Yeah, you need chocolate. Like I even go and buy the the fancy Brookside stuff that has the 
acai berries and shit in that because it really masked it really masked the taste but uh you know in the hood back in the day they would just take half a half a gram or a full gram they would put them in ice cube trays with the chocolate and then they would wrap them in tin foil and then you would see them at the bars and you know all the dudes just be passing them out to all the college kids and they were getting 25 sometimes getting more depending on how like goofy the person was but yeah they were getting at least 25 per thing and you would just see them in their freezer you know just stacking these trays up so you know in the gray market man when you see opportunity there's a lot to this and you can you can grow mushrooms in an apartment like if you're trying to get yourself out of an apartment into a home this might be another opportunity for people that uh don't mind a little risk calculated risk in life um you know there's always risk to reward and that kind of stuff but uh i think the tide has turned from this also for the most part i think law enforcement sees it as uh something less that you know there's a lot of other things like meth fentanyl things that they're they're worried about so this is more of just like kind of riding that wave of a, a new market that will open up see that candy there brian you meant y'all mentioned candy it's a better taste so been in the lab, man. Made some hard candy, right? Made some hard candies with THC and mushrooms in them. One time. See, and that's that's some hood stuff. Like you're not gonna necessarily find that because, as far as I understand, there's nowhere that where that could exist where you could have THC and uh, psilocybin in a product together legally and, and buy it legally. And so you can see the, mushrooms. the red ones and the purple ones. So you got to find an OG, and they don't come out of the woodwork. So that's why this this show was fun for me, man. It's kind of going down memory lane for me. Yeah, All those years we were hanging out. Great memory so you, lane. You like the new wave candy, man. Like when I was a kid, we had the candy. Man, he the we had that one house. Brothers yeah. go to Willy Wonka style, baby. Willy Wonka right. style, bro. You mentioned. Uh, Marco, about the um, the prop, not the way. The, uh, about the what? Is that something I can speak on? No, what'd you say uh, again? You I just, hear you, bro. Yeah, you just uh, froze on us. Oh, they're trying to. Oh, I think I lost you. Try it. Try it again. We just couldn't hear you. you. Kind of froze up for a sec. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Hey, and real quick, since we're having a bit of an issue, uh, they're saying okay, if you could like, about that. can I talk about that? Wait one second. If you could, um, if you could kind of just fix your mic and just keep it where it's at. I guess it's kind of getting a lot of, you know, static. Um, and then we didn't hear what you said because you froze. Sorry about that. I was going to ask, because Marco had mentioned about the numbers on it, like meaning numbers like profitability or what is, how much is it going to cost you in the streets? Or Yeah, street numbers. So when people are out there looking, they don't get ripped off. Like, what is, you know what I mean? Well, um, it's safe to say you're going to probably spend somewhere between – Fifty and a hundred dollars an eighth, three point five grams. Okay. And I would say that really hasn't changed in a long, long time, man. That's what it was in college. The that's what I remember. It was like we got an eighth, and me and my buddy, uh, homie Alex Quick, shout out Alex from Virginia Beach, um, man. He, you know, and uh, we split that bad boy. The 50 bucks. Whoa. See, now it's kind of changed. That's, you know, that's standard. Uh, it's not like we're going to go to the dispensary and, you know what I mean? Hey, man, sell me an eighth. You can go across the street and get one yourself. You know, it's different in the mushroom game. And it seems like to me, um, one of my buddies, um, shout out Mike Chambers down at uh, one of the grocery stores. He's a, uh, he's a fun guy guy, I should say. Uh, he went to class and went to school and did all that. But he told me, he said, bro, when you get into this, there once you meet one person that's looking for him, I guarantee there's eight to ten more of his his or her friends that are looking for the, that same thing. So just be careful. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm just, it, it 
It's nothing about none of that street shit for me. It's all about I need to help somebody not feel the way I felt. That's where it's at for me. Boom. Um, I can worry about getting paid later on with you know you know other stuff. Uh, maybe I can get picked up with a company. I can show them some things. That'd be great. But my whole goal is just to show somebody else how I feel. Like man, I used to feel like shit. My girl will tell you all today, man. What's wrong with you? I'd be like, I don't know, babe. We go through this and that. It's just mostly, I just need to be on some shrooms. I can't do it all the time, though. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's it's a great break. Um, it's a great restart to the brain, man. Oh, I, I cannot say it enough. Like, I cannot say it enough that it is a restart to the brain. And it gets you going, meaning, like, you feel so good. And you don't even know why. Like, why am I smiling? Why am I smiling? I'm doing the dishes. What is there to smile about? I'm doing dishes, but it's just something about it. Like, it just brings it out of you, man. But yeah, uh, going back to what you said, Marco, uh, that's about the going price you said from back in college. Now, there are some strains that will put you at like, you know, four or $500 an ounce, 28 grams. Crazy. I'll, I'll tell you one of them is Hawaiian. Shout out to uh, shout out to uh, 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 my boy Robbie at Nurses and X. He told me about the Hawaiian. They a normal dose of uh, these Hawaiian strain of, of mushrooms is 0.2, and a high dose is 0.8. So we're talking about less than a gram, and you're done. So. I would definitely say uh, the pricing, depending on what you get. If you if you get with someone that knows, uh, you know, the different species of uh, mushrooms, and you know the everybody knows the cubensis, but not everybody knows the kaisins, uh, you know, or the next uh, version of uh, asherians or whatnot. They, not everybody knows all the other ones that they just know, like you said. Uh, uh, they know penis envy. They definitely know golden teacher, but they don't know Hawaii uh, or some of the other strains where you can take only less than less than a gram, less than a gram, full dose, less than a gram. That's pretty wild, man. So is that like because it seems like the spores are kind of your reset and cost kind of each time. Are you able to keep these strains? like we do you know with cannabis or does it kind of like you have to rely on that guy that's got that sterile you know laboratory environment to get your uh, spores from well because they're kind of cost efficient now uh you can go two ways like you said if you want to keep buying them that's cool they're, they're gonna cost you somewhere between 20 and like 30 40 bucks um a syringe which is like 10 cc's or you can buy that that one time and do those extra instructions I told you, and I'm gonna say them real quick. Get you some corn or some rice with that needle, shoot it up, wait for that bag to turn white, add some sterile substrate to it, and then once that turns white, and then the mushrooms start to grow. And here's the important part when you ask me about the spores, okay? Once the mushroom grows before the cap opens, cut it, cut the mushroom out, cut one of those mushrooms out. Okay, and once again, you didn't wash, you didn't wash, you washed your tail, you got in the shower, you didn't put two pairs of gloves on, and you didn't put alcohol and rubbed it down in between. So I'm sterile, sterile when I'm doing this. I'll take that one mushroom and I'll cut the top, the cap part off of it. Okay, I'm gonna take the cap off from the stem, and I'm just taking the cap, and I'm going to get a little piece of aluminum. I'm gonna put the cap onto that piece of aluminum. Okay. Now I'm going to take that cap and that aluminum and I'm going to put it in like um, one of the little containers, sandwich containers or whatnot that you can close the top on. Airtight? Yes, airtight. And I'm going to put it in one of them cabinets. 24 hours later, I'm going to go and open that. And guess what happened? The spore that is on the bottom of the cap fell onto the aluminum foil. And you're probably like, what the hell does that mean? There's your spore right there. So all you have to do now is get you some good water and uh, scratch, scratch the spore that you have on that aluminum foil very softly. Put a couple drops of water and get a syringe and suck it back into the syringe. 
And now you have that spore again, bro. We ain't buying shit else. Boom. I like that, man. I, I was hoping it was that simple because that that's how it needs to be. You save your own spores, man. Try to keep, you know, we're all about saving that money, man, being self-sufficient. So that's dope. Once you get it, you can keep those strains going. Is that is that I bet that's kind of easy to mess up. So I'd imagine you'd want to kind of hedge your bets and do several little of these little containers and try to spore them out kind of to make sure you're getting, uh, you know, most bang for your buck. What do you think about that? I would say keep a couple spores. Every time you grow some mushrooms, you need to be cutting because you're going to cut them anyway when they're done. You might as well save one for the next round. You always have a I can't hear you. I can't hear you at all. You got to get that mic right back in front of your face, MJ. We're not being able to hear you at all. I would say you should be able to get two or three different strains. You should always be able to have something for the next round without having to buy. So I'm going to say this. Let's just say everything crashed in. I don't have a job or anything, but I need to start some more shrooms. I don't have no money to buy none, and I sure don't know nobody where I can <laughs> go and get a, a syringe from. So I'm going to keep this mushroom i'm gonna cut it because it's ready and i'm going to cut the top of it off from the stem very carefully with a exacto knife or something that's sterile okay once i cut that put it back on that aluminum foil and cover it airtight for 24 hours when i come back out and lift that cap the spore is on the bottom now i have another spore so yeah i would say keep three four strings if you're gonna try this kits to grow these man i have it. marco let me th let me say this how many companies are going to tell you the easy way they want you to buy all that shit man and you that mic. It your, your mic hold, hold that mic close almost how's that there you go all right so i got you so what kind of time okay let's say you do you know something happened the person lost their income what's what's that time from flip all right boom start today 30 what? days Oh, okay. And then now what kind of, what is it for drying? It's nothing like cannabis, right? You just want to air dry, dry, and then you're done. Yeah. I'd air dry 24 hours, um, 24 hours, uh, just, you know, out on the counter somewhere, somewhere, uh, preferably where it's dark. Okay. 24 hours and they're done. I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use a dehydrator. Um, everybody has a dumb moment. Maybe we didn't press the right settings and eight hours later it's dust. Now, do you now? Here's my thing. I remember distinctly uh, uh, college days. They were very crispy. You know, we were breaking. It was crispy. You know, as as now, do you want them more like a marshmallow? You know, now that we, you know people are connoisseurs, is that what we're going for? A couple of people, a lot of people like them different ways. I know um, one of my buddies. He likes them anyway, and you know, like my <laughs> girlfriend, she'll only eat them with like. Uh, you know, a mango slice or something like that, but I don't like the mushy. I'd prefer them, you know, I want to chew it up like a cracker and be done and get it out. Like, I want to chew it up and be done with it if I'm going to chew a real one. Um, so the crunchy ones are better for me, but I can, let me say this, the fresh mushrooms are stronger than the dry ones, but they don't last as long and they taste better. Okay, that makes sense. So now you got to watch your weight too with your with your moisture, I would imagine, because there's a big difference from kind of moist to kind of crispy. You know what I mean? Yeah, you said that right. 90 percent water loss. Mm -hmm. So that ten gram mushroom you pull when it's dry, it's only gonna be one gram. Oh, okay. That was great. That's a that's a bar right there. Ten to one. Ten to one. And you already know it's ten to one wet to dry. So if you only want to eat one gram, Marco, and you say I want to eat the fresh ones, now you gotta eat ten grams of mushrooms. That's Whoa. like a salad from Wendy's, bro. You ain't gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind hey, of pepper you got? Hey, and Marco, it seems like the fresh ones are the uh the ones that that mess up people's stomachs the most. Yes. Okay. So you're having more volume and you're having a, a a way higher chance of having to, you know, go to the bathroom when yeah. everybody else is having fun. Because imagine, remember how your stomach felt when you did that, what, one gram? Now you ate 10 grams? That's a salad. Mm. That's rough. Rough on the body, man. Now you're tripping and thinking about what your stomach's doing. Mm -mm. 
Yeah. Now you yeah, you're tripping with a messed up stomach, <laughs> yo. That's that's going in reverse. <laughs> Oh man, in the bathroom, just watching the shower curtain move and shit. Like this is not a good feeling. <laughs> hey, since you're talking about in the bathroom, I, I would mention uh, when you walk by mirrors and stuff. Um, Do not. Yeah, and you're probably going to now that we're fucking saying this, but um, there there is something to looking at yourself tripping like that. And I promise you, if you've done it one time, you don't really want to do it again for whatever reason. It's just not something that's advised. Uh, but again, it's up to you. You probably are going to fucking do it now, like I said. So, But you're not going to do it again is the, is the thing. Because we warned you, then you're going to do it, and then you're going to be like, they fucking warned me about that shit, and then you won't do it again. So just don't even glance at your face. Like, just don't even look at... <laughs> ah, man. Warm. And that's, that's another part of, like, sometimes going public. Like, if people can see your eyeballs and stuff, people mm. freak the fuck out, or at least... They don't really say anything, but their body language just like freaks the fuck out. You know, like whoa, like it's, it's always a yeah, like a pullback reaction. And then some of those that have been in the game for a little while, like yourself, have already known if you're gonna be out in the public, man, you definitely gotta be wearing some glasses. And number two, I prefer you be wearing glasses. Number two, if you're not wearing glasses, don't look at somebody in their face while you're talking to them. Kind of look over them, to kind of like over their head or over their, their ear or something like that. Because the worst experience is, like me, I, I'll look at you until you blink away. Like, I'm interested in what you're saying. I'm giving you my full thousand percent of, of, of me to tell you I'm interested. But you're not going to do that on mushrooms. I guarantee you're not going to do that. When you see somebody's eye blink and it just slide down the side of their face, you don't know how to like look at them again. Like, dude, your fucking eyeball is gone. Like, it just blinked. You blinked your eye and it's gone. Like, what happened? You're not going to want to have that feeling. Like you said, like, I don't want my stomach to feel and be tripping. I definitely don't want to see nothing happen looking at your forehead, you know, wink or like there's an eyeball up there. I don't want to have none of them feelings like that, bro. Definitely don't. So those two gram Tuesdays, there's a lot of laughing going on. Sounds like like just tripping. It's not laughing, dude. It's giggling. Yeah. Okay. It's grown man giggling. <laughs> grown right. man giggling. Nice, well, yeah, nice. that two gram Tuesday. Shout out to Jason Liker. That's my dog. Him and his boy Josh. They, you know, them the ones that put me on. I didn't know nothing about none of this. I'm a bruh in the hood. I don't, I don't know about no damn mushrooms. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to them. They always came through like, dude, let's do two grams on Tuesday. I was like, why on a Tuesday? I'm off tomorrow. Tonight's my Friday. I was like, dude, we all got to go to work. You the only one at home texting us. Like, How y'all feeling like, dude, we're struggling. You already know that. Why you sleep? He's so, ready. Yeah. Oh, man. Two gram Tuesdays. I don't know if I can do that again. Maybe 2.5. We ain't going down. We'll move up. We'll progress, but we definitely ain't going down. Well, Ooh, coach four. always said you either get better or you get worse, but you don't stay the same. So. Ever. <laughs> so, yeah, we definitely going to do a little bit more. Um, would you be opposed to trying um, some candy or uh, in a pill form? I, I wouldn't be opposed. I mean, like, I know uh, Brian, he don't give a shit how you do it. You could put a worm on it and give it to him and it must and he'll eat it just like that. A worm the must. <laughs> no, man, that eat, eating the, the raw ones bothers me. Like I chew it up with chocolate. I don't know. I, I think you had frozen, but I, I was joking. Like I even spent a little extra money to get the fancy chocolate so I don't have to taste. It's it's a it's a nightmare getting it down, but it's worth it. It's worth that because it's 15 minutes of Especially if the candies, if you did, you know, you got your dosing in there, man, and there, somebody can kind of get that consistency. That 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 damn sure would be a winner, you know. That's well, the, the way he's doing it is like, you know, that's like the the hood way, you know. Like you go, all right, I want four candies. All right, that's gonna cost you a hundred bucks because they're in the chocolates. Um, and the, and again, that's a way to make you know a nice little. I, you know, it's you know weird thing, man. There weren't a lot of the people that used to sell mushrooms, and there was like, uh, there's a bar. What's that bar on Colfax? Everybody goes to. It's like a, it's a, uh, it starts with a C, I think, or something, right? Um, you know what I'm talking about, MJ? West Colfax near downtown. Or? They got they got like uh, late night bands and all that stuff. You can get you can get any drug there, to be honest with you. 
But I remember back in the day that there'd be a lot of like a, a lot of mushroom people there. And they always just seemed like they had unbelievable amount of money compared to all the other people that were trying to hustle there. Um, mm-hmm. Cervantes. 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 Yes. Cervantes. Yeah, I that place. That if you're a if you're a tourist and you have nowhere to go, go to Cervantes. Stand so around stand for a there. little bit, and somebody's it's like being in Jamaica. <laughs> somebody's gonna come up to you and be like, "Hey, hey, bro, what you looking for? You look like you're new here. You know yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, that place is wild. But anyway, they, those individuals, man, they would be flipping them uh, little chocolates out of the ice cube trays. And that's the way I've always seen it being done, man. S- cheap, easy process, twenty five dollars. Boom. Yeah, but it's still consistent. It's pretty consistent. But look. I thought about something, you know, when you eat mushrooms, the nutrients aren't unlocked until they're cooked for your stomach. I feel like, and then the chat just said, um, Kaiser Soze said the tighten is what fucks with your stomach. Yes. So I feel like that, you know, not cooked fungi is what's actually fucking with your stomach. Um, I think that you said it, you said it was chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N. That's right. Uh huh. That I did believe, and I have a little note on that because someone's, I knew someone was going to ask about that. You give me two seconds. I'm going to find that part of it. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Because I know cooking it is what breaks that kind of down and lets your stomach and your body absorb the nutrients. So don't get raw mushrooms on your salad. I mean, that's- oh, no, don't do that. Please don't. Yeah. Just do it the OG way. Stop trying to do all that new stuff for, uh, what is it? <laughs> TikTok and all that. You trying to create something. Just go with what people say. Do the original thing. Don't try and venture out until you know what you're doing. I should say. Don't make no mistakes like we did early in the game. Um, oh, there's a. Oh, while you were looking for that, I was just going to say there's a, a famous place. If you ever do go to the South, the place, I think it's all, it might be nationwide now, but it's called Mellow Mushroom. And it's like a trippy pizza looking place. But the first one was in uh, in Athens, Georgia. And they used to have like a secret thing on the on the menu that you could order that and you could get like a mellow mushroom pizza. And that would be that you you had ordered a, like a, a pizza that you're going to trip on. Uh, so that was uh, that was like a little secret code mm-hmm. back in the day. Um, so, yeah, these these things have been around for a long time. I'm just glad that it can be mainstream without people kind of feeling a, a certain way about about talking about it in the open. I found it. Okay, so we, I remember you touched bases on the Lemon Tech, and one of the reasons why um, I'm bringing this up because that is under Lemon Tech. Um, one of the causes it reduces nausea. The acid in the lemon juice um, is thought to break down some of the the chitin in the shroom cell walls. Um, this is one of the main suspects for nausea experience on mu- magic mushrooms um, throughout the body. Um, that they were pretty much saying if you suffer from uh, very badly uh, from uh, nausea, uh, mushroom tea might be for you. As you need not to consume any chitin, C H I T I N. That is the part that of the mushroom that gets you or makes you feel uneasy in the stomach and nauseated. Marco, when we're are we saying tomato tomato? Like, are, is that chitin? Is it the same thing? Yeah, chitin. That's okay. chitin. Okay. It's spelled like chitin. Yep. Uh, uh, I used to it. say it that way. Yeah. 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 Well, however, because... you say it, it's a tomato, tomato thing, but uh, yeah. that's eye opening that that's what causes that because that's a, a thing that I use to kind of like develop uh, the, the, the crustaceans, exoskeletons and stuff. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. They love that. Well, uh, okay. I, I got I, I, Okay. Question. Now, uh, I'm just going to touch base with what Marco said about on the numbers. Who, like, you know, we've been out of, not, not out of all out of cannabis. And I, I don't pretty much deal with cannabis unless it's just something special I want to do personally. But who is messing around with cannabis and why? I, let me, I, I'm not, I take that back because that kind of sounds bad. Let me keep it on a high positive note. Why wouldn't you not be able to craft your own mushroom? Why are you growing weed when you can craft your own mushroom and make, if you're trying to make money, you, why would you be able to make a very minimum of $6,400 a pound of mushrooms? Mm. Let, me, let me just that's, throw that out there, y'all. $6,400. With limited growers to compete with. Right. That's why I was saying with that Cervantes place. 
Exactly. Um, you know, I mean, like if you can find the right place to just flip stuff, people when they're especially when they're drunk, man, twenty five dollars ain't shit. They sure ain't. There's nothing. I mean, yeah. So look what you're getting into before you get into it. If you're just gonna trip and trip, go ahead and do that. But if you're trying to do other things, know what the numbers look like. Know what if it's worth worth your time. Um, By all means, grow your cannabis if you smoke cannabis, because then you're paying yourself every time you grow it anyway. But also grow mushrooms. Like, fuck yeah. Like, look at the numbers. And then think about cannabis, how, like, the market is. It changes. It's volatile. You don't know what you get. Mushrooms, at least, you know, from even from a patient standpoint, everything is sterile. You know what I mean? So I'm, it's a very clean product if you really want to serve people and, and do good, you know. So something to think about. Very. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. As far as being sterile, this isn't cannabis where we have to take it to the lab and have it tested before we can put it on the uh, the shelves for selling. If your mushrooms don't turn out and look good all the time the way they're supposed to, uh, they're probably not good. And you're going to know they're not going to even grow because they're going to mold out. Instead of that whole bag turning white, it's going to turn green. So nothing's going to grow. So uh, Marco's exactly right. It's very very sterile uh, when we come to mushrooms. Um, if you have them, you know that they're coming from a reliable, uh, clean source because it has to be very clean uh, and sterile for them to actually grow, I should say. I mean, and that's that's pretty dope if you think about it, because if you look at cannabis, you know, everybody can grow this and they can grow pretty much in anything loaded with chemicals and everything else. But when you have that mushroom, the the fact that it grew is the proof that it's clean. That's dope. That's dope. I like that. And then um, there are some people, um, you know, we are talking, I think we we're touch bases on the different ways to consume, but there are some people that you guys will see this here soon, but some people just like it in the pill form. They don't want to have a taste. They don't want to like, you know, Ryan said he masses up with some of that good, good chocolate, a Godiva or whatnot. But uh, yeah, some people don't like it. They just want to chew it up, put it in a pill or something. You can do that if you want to put it in a pill and eat it that way. Uh, but if not, you want to be a hero tonight, then go ahead and dive your ass into eating some of this. Like, Is that who, pill a little like caps? Is it the capsule? Yeah, and it's got a dose in there. Okay. Yeah, so we stuffed these. These are, and the reason why we did these. Shout out to my girlfriend, Tanya. Um, the reason why we did these is because they're exactly the same amount every time. I don't want to take this big old thing not knowing what this, but I know exactly what this is. What's that little one right there? How much was that? that this little, pill? Little or, well, how much in the pill and how much was in that little shroom you were holding? How so in, this, in the pill, they're 0. 0.30 each. Okay. And this mushroom, let's put it, like he said, bring it to the scale. Bring it to the scale. Let's find out. <laughs> you want to know? We're going to find out right now. But I would say just weighing this in my hand, probably two grams. 2.5. Okay, a, a nice cured finished mushroom right there, ready for consumption. Dry. I could drop it. Nothing breaks off of it or anything. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's nice and dry. And when it comes to uh, like using this as a medicine, you know, point, especially when you're first starting out, like a couple points off uh, matters. So when you're using these scales, uh, especially over time, a lot of them aren't um, accurate anymore. So uh, an old hood trick would be to use a nickel. It's always five grams on point. So if you're using this to, to measure out drugs, if you will, uh, your medicine, um, you put the nickel on there first to make sure it's accurate, or if it's off, then you obviously calculate whichever way it's off to make sure you don't overdose or underdose. That damn Brian is a goddamn OG, Brian. Talk to him with that nickel. Shit. Yeah, put the nickel on it. Put the nickel <laughs> on it. Definitely. That reminds me of the old boys with the, the scale, the beam, the little whole, uh, mail letter holder. You put the nickel on that thing. That's back before you had that good quality, because it used to be like, man, you can't, you gotta have a scale to measure that. You can't eyeball that good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nobody wants to give anything away. So no. you weigh that shit out in front of everybody. And, or right. when you you and your home like a bridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you had to split a bag, you say, All right, well, you divide the bag and I pick. 
or I divide and you pick. You know, kind of yeah, stuff. amen to that. And let me say this. If whoever you're giving, you're getting your shrooms from, if they don't give you no shrooms, they ain't shit. Wait, okay. what are you saying? Hold I'm on, say that. that. I'm going to say that one more time. Nobody understood this. If the person you're getting your shrooms from don't just give them to you, he ain't shit. Hmm. Let me back it up. Let me back it up. You're thinking. You're like, what? No, no. You? I, what you're saying is like... He, I guess he should have so many clientele. Like the first time you're talking to him, he should just kind of let you maybe get a couple right here, grams a couple on him. Caps. I love what you're saying. Say it again, Brian. Usually, and that backs up again, I guess, how I, my experience, usually these boys that are hustling in this manner have the income and they, they have such an income and they have such a, a, a inventory that they should be able to give you like a sample, like you had Costco, baby, over there eating good. Uh, walking around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. I hey, exactly right. Bro, you could come to me today. Obviously, we have that relationship anyway, but somebody or a friend of a friend, Marco or somebody else. Hey, Mike, what's up, bro? I, you know, we talked about this and that here, bro. Here you go. What you? Here, I got this, 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 and that. Like five different things. I want you to try all of them. Take all this shit home. You got some homework to do, some Marco. Damn it! I need to write this shit down. Tell me what you think about this, 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 and that. And you try it. However long it takes you to do it, and get back with me, bro. That's it. I ain't asked you for a dime. I didn't give you no damn link to no damn uh, uh, cash app saying hook me up on the on the download. None of that. I ain't asked for that because I don't need the money for that. I'm not come into back through. that. I'm just good, bro. Come back through and get. I just want the knowledge. Just give me some feedback, bro. What was it like? Like, man, I ate it and it, I threw up, but uh, 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 or whatever, whatever it was. Tell me, I need to know so I can, you know, figure out other things. That's what it's all about. Now, if you just go, you know, like you just said, you want to go down to Cervantes and just buy some shit. There's a whole bunch of cats down there to sell you some shit, but it won't be me. Because I'm going to sell you on knowledge before I sell you on anything that is going to go in green to my pocket. That's where the money's at. Knowledge. But I guarantee you, Marco, you'll come back later. You'll be like, damn, this dude gave me all this shit free, man. Gave me like eight grams of mushrooms, candy, pills, mushroom form, chocolate. We're like, dude, like, why would you not want to come back and fuck with me then? Excuse my yeah, language. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's shit. facts, man. You know, show that love, give a little bit. And the thing is, you know, when you when you bless somebody that, you know, they're going to come back. You know, what I mean, unless that's the only time you're ever going to do that smoke or shroom and never do it again. If the next time you're going to be thinking about MJ, you know what I mean? You're like, well, where's where's your boy MJ? You know, you know, that kind of thing. So it's an investment in yourself. You know, if you look at it that way, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of people and I know a couple people that are in it. We do. We do the same. We, you know. You teach somebody else to do something and however they do what, what they do with it, that's what they do. I can't control that. You know, I, all I want to know is you're interested in doing it. Let me show you how I did it. Exactly how I did it. And matter of fact, while I'm showing you how to do it, you're going to get hands on and do the whole thing. And when you're done, you're going to take this whole kit that I have here ready for you home with you. You're going to go home and do it. We all have a smartphone. We can talk on video, FaceTime or whatever. And now you're invested with me. Not financially, but in a education over egos type shit. Like, dude, I didn't sent you home with a whole kit. I want to see you do it now. You be great. I want you to be great. And you do this whole thing and figure it out. If you have questions, man, you call me anytime tonight. We're going to figure it out. Smoke a blunt. Do what we got to do and get it going. That's where I'm at. I'm not going to be like, here, bro. How much would, would look? What you trying to spend? $100? All right, well, here you go. I already holler at you. I'm not that dude. I'm the dude that you can be like, bro. man. I got to go over there and talk to this dude. He's going to talk to his ass off for like two hours before I even get the shrooms. Like, <laughs> and a lot of my people will tell you, like, that dude could talk. Like, could you better, you know, if you're coming over to hang out with me, we're going to be here a while. We're Pack a lunch. Please do. If not, I'm going to be <laughs> cooking some shit up over there with some shrooms in it. <laughs> so be careful. Now that energy was, uh, was contagious. Uh, I saw right there, Marco, we were trying to uh, start to, to have more of like a structure for the show. So, London, if you wanted to pop on to do that intermission, That's we were. Uh, we just yeah, roll we, right on through it. <laughs> yeah, but so uh, for our audience. Show, man. Uh, you may as well keep rolling through, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want the audience to know that London, myself and Marco, we've been thinking about some things behind the scenes. So I think you'll see some improvements as, as it goes on. 
really trying to think about you guys as well. Uh, so we appreciate feedback, good, or bad or whatever. But yeah, we want to move into 2023 where we're bringing you individuals, uh, you know, in part, I, I hope uh, that you appreciate that you might not not necessarily ever heard from before. So um, I, to, to me and Marco, you know, that part of that's also important. It's like, yeah, we we can listen to a lot of the same talking heads. And sometimes that's important because, uh, you know, they're talking heads for a reason. And they you know, when they speak, there's a reason to listen to them uh, every time. Uh, but also on the flip side of that, there's so many uh, smart individuals that I would consider more in the gray underground world. You know, people that I, you know, my whole life, I've kind of like felt like I always kind of bonded with. Uh, there are just people that, that we always had fun with. One of the one of the best uh, memories I have with MJ was meeting him downtown at a concert. Uh, there's like this B-level rapper. His name was Spice One. Uh, and this was right when like dabs were coming out, Marco. Right. So I somehow it like gets around spice one. We get down to VIP and we are smoking this dude down. Like everybody's just burning. Uh, spice one then, was hard, by the way. Right. Hard, yeah, yeah. Hard. Well, he never smoked dabs before. So right before he's going on stage, he's picking up his computer and making sure he's going over his lyrics. And he's like kind of making fun of us and himself that we got him so fucked up. Uh, off the dabs that he was like, man, I'm going to forget my lyrics, man. Hold on a second. Like he kicked us out like 10 minutes beforehand so he could go over his stuff. Uh, and that was something that I always remember because MJ was just sitting on across from me in this little tiny, I guess that's uh, where VIP happens. Huh? It's like the really tiny rooms um, and just that's giggling great. again, just having fun, man. And that was, uh, that was a great night. And uh, I, I would imagine you remember that night, but it was just fun to, uh, you know, to see him then go on stage and kind of like, Fumble his words a little bit, cut it short. I don't know. Whoa. It's just funny. I remember that at night. That night exactly. Ben was there. Uh, you were there. Uh, JC was there. Uh, there was like four or five of uh, my best friends. Shout out to Natalie Simone. Shout out to Natalie Simone, my best friend. Yeah, yeah, you're talking. Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yes, you remember oh, yeah. Natalie Simone, my best friend, my business partner. Yeah, um, I thought that. So close, I thought well, that was your lady for like the first year I knew you. I don't know why everybody keeps thinking. Everybody's like, "Is that your girlfriend?" I was like, "No, it's my best friend." Like, man, y'all pop up at every show together. Why wouldn't like, people think that? Consistency, you got to show up all the time. But yeah, man, um, that'd be rude. That'd be me like asking Marco, be like, "Who's Nikki?" He's like, "It's my <laughs> wife." Like, who do you think that is? Like, hey, bro, um, when, you when you're this age, you just assume everybody is that man's wife and respect and proceed that way, and it won't be no trouble. <laughs> True, Brian. That night you're you talking about, shit. I'll never forget because you guys had a dab bowl that i still have the picture of it we have a clipper lighter inside sideways it's like a shot glass they had i was like holy shit but dude he hit that dab and i was like this dude is done i just sat there and kind of chuckled and more importantly dude asked me about some song he was like you remember this song such and such and i was like mm, i don't really listen to spice one all like i know all the words or anything like that so i definitely remember that day no i remember he was quizzing you almost like a he started to be a jerk about it. You know, yeah, he's, he's like, like man, don't you don't know such and such. I was like, no, nah, but ask me some Pink Floyd shit. Please yeah. ask me some of that. We don't go all talk about that all night. But yeah, I didn't. I no disrespect to uh, no disrespect uh, to Spice One, but I didn't. I didn't. You know, I didn't know it all the time. And then, bro, we've been doing like nine dabs. I'm fucked up. I don't know nothing right now. <laughs> yeah, that was when we first, like I said, we first getting into him. And the reason I knew who he was was uh, because of Tupac. Uh, but I guess if you hadn't really necessarily listened to all that, you might not know who that was. 187. He wrote one of our roommates because I was like 92. 90, I got graduated high school in 92. So I was in college during, right around then. And we had a roommate that would say Spice One was the hardest rapper. He's harder than anybody. You know, you know those guys that always just ride with a guy. And Spice One was his guy. And so that's how I ended up really, you know, just rocking with him a little bit but he has some good stuff man you know what i mean he has some yeah he's he was super cool to us and stuff yeah uh, i just thought it was fun because like you know you're hanging you out with somebody. Messed up. yeah it's like seeing somebody then go on stage it's like oh man hey, on his computer looking at we it. did that no, yeah not. what are you doing like and we didn't do it on purpose or anything it just <laughs> we were back there for probably a good hour hour and a half it felt like and then yeah oh, man he my, went on stage my goodness he was he was on stage less less time than we were Shout backstage. I remember that. Sauce. 
Sauce, yeah, the saucy sauce. Shout out to, uh, mm-hmm. fuck, man, uh, Sasquatch. Yeah, that's uh, Because that's like, who we were hitting. Song. We were smoking uh, Duke Diamond's gear that was done by Sasquatch. Yeah, is it 503? Before, 503, before um, Solvent List and all that stuff even existed. That's solid right and there. And that was like the new, new, new. Nobody nobody even knew what the hell we were talking about. I think that's why we were invited what back year was there. this, Brian? Man, that might have been like 16, 15. What year was this? This was a while 15, ago, bro. 16? Okay, okay. Yeah. Y'all had that loud, man. That was my, back in the loud days. Just then. My, I know my son was only one or two years old, and he's seven. So it was Oh, wow. Like, so, yeah. It's probably like 16, 2016, 17. Okay. When, it, and it wasn't like at first we were uh marco we were blasting the stuff in a tube it's just like the straight glass tube and you'd be doing it in like the backyard people didn't know what you were doing and you're usually doing it at a party <laughs> and somebody somebody walk outside on the back deck and like start to light a cigarette and everybody mm-hmm. fucking freak out i mean the the uh what was that attention to detail and safety was was not Whoa. there when this shit first started super low and now it's gone to where it's like a, it's a true art form, man. It's a exactly. it's amazing to me how quickly that's happened. Yeah, you imagine if we many people got shot. burnt. True. Like the deep fried turkey. Exactly, that deep fried turkey would get on them legs. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine back in them days. Now that we've all touched bases on some on some mushrooms, it's two thousand you know twenty three now. So can you imagine knowing what you know now and you doing shrooms back 2016? Marco, what was you doing 2016? 16? Oh, man, I, was, I, I just went to Vegas, I think. Okay. I just moved out there doing, doing a little stint in the commercial world. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, well, where we're at right now and where things are going, I mean, everybody's in their own lane doing their own thing, and that's great. You know, do that. that we need more of that. That's where it's at. Um, um, and I can just say for me, I mean, I and Brian could probably attest to this. I've worked, you know, a couple dispensaries and did this and that. But to me, we don't see eye to eye, meaning the, what y'all doing in the dispensary, I get it. I grow at the crib. I'm not. I, I'm not in no hurry to get mine out in 30 days to put it on the shelf. I don't care if it grow for nine weeks. I don't give a darn. You know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna be quality every time. Quality over anything. Take your time doing what you're doing. It's 2023. All this shit we did in the past, that is great. We need to really, we need to really focus on what we're doing going forward. And I think with mushrooms, uh, in your system is definitely gonna help you get to that happy, fluffy positive i want to dance there ain't no music on right now type of get my party on or whatnot nobody knows about that until you actually try the medicine got to try it you can't just listen to us talk about it you actually got to dig in and try it you watch one of these days uh marco and brian i'm gonna do something crazy i'm probably gonna leave some medicine somewhere i'm gonna just go live somewhere and i'm gonna be like here i'm here this is this boom you find it send me a, a, a text or whatever and let me know you got it that's what i'm gonna try and do you i am sure. trying yeah just to get it out there just like, like a seed drop a little secret seed drop secret that's it a little uh, hey, we almost speaking of seeds we almost started a seed company together back in the day we that's sure much, did. That's how much I love this dude, oh, man. Sure. We sure yeah. did. Beans to seeds. Wait, Pretty seed. Clean. What was seed it? hoarders. Seed hoarders. There you go. Okay, yeah. okay. Then that's yeah. a dope name. It got it got close, but then of course we shit got uh it didn't work out, man. But that's what I mean by like being an entrepreneur. You just keep it moving. Usually your first ideas don't work out. Uh, but yeah, man, trying to find good people and, and uh, putting things together. And MJ's always been. I think it's more we we bonded over the fact that like we in a way we've come from kind of the, some of the same places and I think seeing certain things kind of humbles you it realizes that grow, being able to just grow old in life uh, sometimes where you come from is is winning the lottery as well um, and I think that's why a lot of individuals want to get out of certain places and you know you never really understand that until you've experienced it. Uh, so that's something that I think MJ and myself and others probably have always kind of bonded with is that, you know, trying to get your family level like if that's level one. 
then, you know, your lifetime, you're just trying to get your, your kin to level two, you know, and hopefully they get it to level three. And as you move up, uh, more individuals are, are wanting to be a part of that. Um, yeah, man, I, I hope that uh, I hope that you find a lot of success, brother, because I know we were both trying to get into the cannabis game. We were doing the, even the education over ego events. Uh, and, you know, at first people, I don't know if they were even rocking with it until, you know, we started uh, meeting up with the Denver normal crews and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that memory lane. But at the same time, I think, um, you know, seeing, seeing you start to thrive and, and uh, know, knowing it's, um, you know, I don't know what the, the best way. Like I, I knew I knew it would come, I guess. Like you're just too positive of an individual, man. Like, like, and as I've gotten older, and we've talked on the show with Marco, I'm a true believer now in karma. So, like, whatever you're putting into the world each and every day, that shit's adding up. And whether that takes years to, you know, eventually come to fruition, I guess that's been on you and however you've carried yourself in life. But eventually, like, if you carry yourself like my boy MJ, I think that things are going to come your way. Uh, in a very positive manner and you're going to start to see for yourself and i think that's where a lot of that comes from and when i first met you i didn't even have that in my life and now here i am all these years later buddy catching up with you and i feel like i got that man where i got that peace i feel like i have abundance i'm trying to just move and take care of my family and educate people over egos all day and like i said i'd say from the first day we met at i don't know which Indo Expo it was where we took a picture and after that you came by the house showed you the grow this and that you know I was like hey, come on in man you, I, I trust you come on in let's do what we do so you're thrive like you said we both come from somewhere where you know whatever we were doing kind of humbled us like I've seen some you know there's some other peoples in the game that have shot straight up to the moon but are they happy and are they there are they there like in their heart, are they there? Are they there just because they're get they're going to get paid X amount of dollars? Like, are is your head into the game or is your pocket into the game? And I think same thing. You know, you found your way. Uh, we we touched uh, we, uh, uh, most a lot of the events we did. It was talking about growing and your specialty, I should say, um, with uh, living soil. So um, I should say we're going to do what we need to do to. Uh, create for our family and probably leave a, le- a legacy where somebody else, one of the kids could say, you know, my daddy used to do this. I used to watch him. I don't know what he's doing, but he did this all the time. Like I'm going to, if, if he doesn't teach or your kids don't learn anything, he's going to learn consistency. I don't know what my dad's doing there, but he's always in there from four to six every day. I don't know what he's doing, but he's there every day. Don't ask me what he's doing. He's going to be doing that. And I want to teach the same thing. Like you said, I want to teach the same thing with my kids. Like, uh, I got a shout out to my uh, my son today. I appreciate him, little uh, Mike Jack or Michael Jackson, my son, 19 in Kansas, uh, out in college. He's playing ball, but yeah, he was saying, you know, you all the time since I was three, you've been doing, you know, doing what you've been doing, and uh, you know, no one ever said, hey man, you want to come over here and do this and that. You always kind of said, you know, I can't do that. You know, I got kids and this and that, so I'm just gonna do what I can do. But my kids is grown now, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, we did, we, we've learned, we've educated ourselves to get us somewhere, man. We need to start thinking and doing more for ourselves instead of always, you know, putting yourself in a predicament to help somebody else out. We need to worry about ourselves first and we need to get our health together, bros. Get in there to get your, uh, your, your, uh, your physicals. Your, uh, check with your doctors. Don't be scared to tell them shit. You smoke cigarettes, whatever it is, you need to get in and check that out. We're getting too old, man. We're getting too old to be doing the same thing. We need to progress. We need to be happy. We, we definitely need to be on some shrooms and see some other stuff in life and move forward. We could try and do 10, 10, 15 businesses and none of them, will, none of them worked out. I'm still happy doing what I'm doing. Guess what? Because I'm me. This is what I do. I can go right in that room, right next door, right in there and do what I do and just be happy just being me. I don't have to, you know, front in front of anybody or say this and that or say anything incorrect or say anything negative or say anything that's going to put anybody down. Because like you said, that ain't me, man. If anything, I'm going to be like, come on over, man. I got to, I'm just reading this book. I think you'd be interested in what I'm about to tell you. because I know how you feel on, you know, you know, on certain times of the month. You don't feel good, but this might help you out. I'm going to show you why. I'm not going to just give you this pill and tell you why. I'm going to show you the science that tells you why you're going to feel you're feeling better after this. Once you leave and come back, now we have a bond. You didn't came over one time because 
I asked you to come over for whatever reason. And now you listen, you went home, did your homework and wow, you're a whole different person now. Sometimes you can't just talk to somebody. You got to grab them by their hand and be like, come on, bro. We're going around over here. Look, come on, get in the car. We're going over here. You can't just wait for them. Just you got to be persistent with, hey, man, look, what are you doing in 28 minutes? I'm going to be at your house. I need you to ride with me. All right, bet. And you have to go in there and you have to move them in that direction. You know what I mean? I don't hang out with a lot of my friends because of how they, their, their uh, negativity. I hear it every day from certain people that I work with, you know, uh, but nothing big. I, I listen to it. Um, and then it bounces off me and I go on about my way. What they say does not necessarily, I, I don't have to, you know, feed into what they got going on. So stay in your own lane, man. Stay in your own lane. Do what's good for you. And mind your damn business, more importantly. Talk to them. And keep your mouth shut. There it is. <laughs> That's rule number one. Keep your mouth shut. New rule number one. Rule number two yeah. should be don't ask nobody for shit if you can't do it yourself. Yeah, man. Y'all, I love that both of y'all have some positive points, gold bars all the way around. You know, keep, man, do you, you know, do your thing. A lot of times, I'm the same way, MJ, Brian. Like, if you're going to see me, you usually got to come to where I'm at, where, where I'm doing my thing, you know, and then come out there and see me because – we only got so much time in a day, man. I was talking to my, my good buddy, uh, G-Dub. He came by the other day. And um, I was like, you know, how many time, how many hours have you spent watching me do shit? You know what I mean? And then I said, how many hours have I spent watching you do shit? You know what I mean? It's a, I spent a lot less time watching him do things. So my point was, hey, bro, you only got so much time. You know what I mean? So you got to get your stuff done too. You know what I mean? You're not get really getting no benefit. I know. And then he said, well, I like listening to you talk OG, you know? And I said, well, that's, that's what's up too. You know? And then, cause it, see, I just only look at it from that. What did I get done point of view? <clears throat> but I guess there is that aspect, you know, he learned some stuff while he was there too. You know what I mean? So I guess that goes both ways. So. Well, if you're, if you're learning, especially from somebody like you, then I would look at it as like a college degree. Like if I'm able to go to you as like a class, then I'm spending the best amount of time as I can learning from you as quickly as I can so that I don't fuck up. Because that, that was goes both ways, but you got to do your homework too. Like MJ was saying, there is, you got to do your homework. Yeah. Well, I, and that I think comes back again from like the old school style, man. You couldn't go to a, like an OG that's trying to mentor you and you're asking them very basic or stupid questions. You know, you're definitely, that's more of a guided hand than, um, you know, a helping hand. Mm -hmm. And then, like, here's another thing. You, you, your profession, you know, when you were doing soil and you're still doing soil, I know. Um, just because you're doing that and I'm your friend, that don't think that, that please don't, let me say this. Please don't think I'm going to go to Brian and be like, hey, bro, hook me up with some soil. And, you, and he's probably going to be like, all right, well, see, let's get our hands dirty because that's you're going to learn this. Or you're not going to just come to me and get it. I mean, I'll give it to you, but I prefer you to learn this so you could do it on your own and be, you know, do a spinoff and do your own thing. That's where it should be. Not don't come to me and, and ask, hey, bro, I'm interested in doing this. I don't care what it is that you're going to do when you finish with your mushrooms. That is none of my business. My business is knowing that you are true to what you say. If you say you want to learn and do this, come on, I'm going to make some time for you. My girl going to be over here. We're going to do this whole class. Like we had two cooking classes this week where we made chocolates and um, hard candy, pressing pills uh, of mushrooms just so we can give these out to people to try. That's it. Come back and holler at me when you're done, when you figure this out. Like, man, you were right. I feel so much better. And I had to write now why I feel better. I don't have no negative thoughts. And let me flash and just say this, 83% um, of the veteran or the, the people that took this clinical test uh, where they go to this clinic and they sleep overnight, they have somebody sit there and watch them overnight, 83% of them people have never had another bad thought again. In one year test, they did this. 83% of the people. So out of 10 people, eight people never had those negative or bad dreams or thoughts or whatever it reset them like that so your question you should be asking yourself is 
what am I waiting for? Stop listening to the stereotypes you hear from, oh, dude, I, I thought I was on, uh, uh, you know, everybody's going to try and make their story better than the last story. Um, I saw a witch or I, whatever it is. What about the people saying, you know what? I was depressed and now I know why I was depressed. It makes you figure it out. It makes you come in tune with yourself like, oh, I'm depressed because this triggers me, this and that. It's going to help you guide your way through it. And when you come back out of it, that is gone. And when something else comes that triggers you, you know how to handle that. It's that easy. To me, that's how I perceive it. I don't know about uh, how Brian does it or Marcos, but for me, that's how I perceive it. Like when I take this, like I, whatever was going on before is done. But I need to make sure in my head that I'm ready to do that. Man, I can't be thinking about, man, am I going to get fired? I've been thinking about this for two weeks and then, oh, well, let me take some mushrooms. It'll go away. No, because that when the mushrooms go away, I'm going to feel like I'm fired. It's like it's going to go like it's not going to go in a good direction for you. So, man, I would say people do a little research. Point three, point three, point three. If you want to start, do point three and then move up from there and always just write down what you, you know, what you're feeling and what you're going through. Um, one of my adult sons uh, took some, and I advised him how much to take, and he took a little bit more than that. He was on the couch crying, literally crying to himself. And I just sat there, you know, like, what is this dude doing? And whatever happened, I left out of the room or did something, came back, and he was, he was smiling. And I asked him, hey, you good? And he was like, I don't know. I was just in tune with myself. It just made me, something just made me cry, and now I got it out. And he told me, he says, I feel like I can just – I can do anything now, right? How I'm feeling right now, I can do anything. There's nothing I cannot do or won't try to do. So people figure out what's going to work for you and try it. You're doing everything else. Look, why would you try a magic mushroom? Natural. Bruce, uh, Bruce Lipton talks about some of that stuff where like uh, when you first get into to mushrooms, um, that for certain individuals like if they've always been like real tough uh that it, it does make those individuals cry because they're actually starting to release emotion and mm -hmm. so for some individuals uh you know that that's the way that they you know that they they want to their maybe their body wants to release that emotion but they've learned to control their emotions so then mm -hmm. when they're obviously on a on a different state um on a different mind state uh they can't really control it as well so the body's able to heal and it's pretty interesting, man. On there's so many individuals out there. Uh, I would say Terrence McKenna is is one of those. If you really want to dive deeper into understanding more of like the mindfulness of it, Terrence McKenna. Yeah. Right that's there, good man. to know, man. Because I mean, like that's a that's a thing, dude. Like we're crying releases things, you know. And I, man, since my brother passed away, it's like. I don't. I can't even cry. Like I well. Like if I feel that emotion, I like well up, and then but no, then I'll go, I'll go back. No tears. Like you know what I mean. And it's like I kind of you feel like you want that release a little bit. Um, and maybe that maybe that is something that, that I need to you know kind of try out. You know, for that reason is it kind of just kind of maybe break down some walls of trauma because think about it. It's not like you know everybody didn't go to war or go you know do you know, get shot at or things like that. Although I have been shot at. Um, but, you know, like people have trauma that you think, you know, a loved one passed, I made it, I made, you know, I kind of got over it. It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but things still weigh on you that you might not even know about um, that could be blocking you in life. So um, I definitely think, man, mushrooms from hearing you boys talk, man, like from y'all's experience, I think that's something that could be very helpful. I think it's going to be helpful and beneficial for anybody that's willing to try it, whether you have any ailments or not. You, you may not have any of this stuff that we're talking. You might not have anxiety. You may not have PTSD. You may not have severe depression. You may not have whatever, but it's worth trying. You don't have to have an ailment to try this for this to open you up and make you a whole different person. Reset. Reset. That's a great that's a great point way of putting it is a reset. Like if you uh, maybe you got some stuff where maybe maybe you would feel or you're secretly like, yo, I, I should probably have a therapist or something. But there's no fucking way that you would ever do that. I think mushrooms could be that answer for you. 
uh, it's going to obviously probably take longer, but that those internal talks that you have when you're tripping and it's, uh, you know, you've kind of pushed it a little bit. You're maybe you're at that three grams or whatever, where you really, you really feel it and it, it, and it can kind of change your life. Um, it's not like this, uh, kumbaya moment or anything. Um, when you first start out, even though those can happen, but for the most part, I think it's more just the veil is lifted a little bit. You get to see that there's, uh, I don't know, there's something else tangible, uh, right here on this planet. And if you alter your state a little bit, you're able to see some of that stuff. Uh, and like I mentioned, most of it is very benevolent and, and, uh, enjoyable. Um, the, the jumping off the roof and all that stuff. I feel like those are more like acid stories. And again, those always seemed more like exaggerated. You know, yes. when I was in high school, people always talked about, oh, this dude, he did like, he put all this acid on his chest and then he turned into it like a glass of orange juice. And he thought it was like everywhere I've gone, I would, I would go to other colleges, you know, and all that, and people would be saying that's the same fucking little stories like that. So I don't even think a lot of that stuff is even true. It's just people repeat it because they've never yeah. truly experienced what acid was especially when they're young one up on everybody's story right yeah of course you know everybody's oh well, man he took so many hits it's like yeah, i don't know for real i don't but know I if don't, i believe that i don't hear any one up stories about how great you're gonna feel and how how much anxiety you released you're able to go to the store and move around and be around people and do all that because you're on some mushrooms you weren't able to be doing that before and those people that are severely pressed it's definitely going to ask you why are you depressed bitch what's going on Let's figure this out right now. And by the end of that trip, you will know exactly what's going on. Like, wow, that's all I needed. And then there's no egos when you're on mushrooms. I guarantee you, you're not thinking about none of that. There's no egos in mushrooms. I guarantee you. It's all self-taught. It's all self-love. And it's all, more importantly, an escape. Not an escape like uh, some other drugs may do. This is like an escape to let you know that man like i keep telling you i feel like i can i can figure out the whole world bro i can drive i can fly a united plane right now from here to la i guarantee i can in my head but my body's gonna be like bro you tripping yeah it is what happened there did he mute himself it doesn't say it oh he froze are you there mj yes sir Ah, uh, you froze there, buddy. At that, uh -oh. you can fly there without an airplane, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know is good. Oh, I'm in LA. Shit, this is great. And it's a, it, it my, I guess it's my opinion, but it it feels like a real medicine, Marco. Like when you respect it, you're not doing it all the time. You're not doing it and like going to the club. You know, that's it, that's not this experience. Uh, you know, that's if you want to enjoy drinks and stuff. I mean, that's what I feel like that atmosphere is for. Right. That's why it's enjoyable. The club can be great. But if you're doing this, the atmosphere is being outside. That's the same mm -hmm. thing. It's like being outside is the club. That's where you want to be to have the best experience. Sounds like Colorado would be the key so when it warms up. Boom. Now, you know, dude, you know, I obviously know, dude. So shout out to shout out to everybody that's really starting to use medicine as a, as a or cannabis and uh, and mushrooms as medicine. Definitely got to venture out into it. We've been doing. Everybody's been doing other drugs and things like that, and that's great. You do what you that works for you. Your drug of choice, your DOC or whatever. You do that. That's great. But let's venture into something a little bit more natural now. Let's try and pick up on a little something one time. Let's try it one time to see it. We're so quick, uh, uh, so quick to pick up and do other things. I mean, we everybody's gonna do what they're gonna do. Let me say that. I don't want to stereotype anybody or do anything. If you drink, do what do you do, and that's great. But all I'm saying is, you should be definitely trying to do some mushrooms. You should definitely be trying to microdose 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 every time. Try that 0 0.3 and see where this takes you. It's gonna open some doors up for you. I'm not talking about maybe not like a new job or anything, but it might. It might. Uh, 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 it might help you answer some questions you had within yourself that you couldn't get help from a therapist or something like that. Well, two people that are on mushrooms, is there, is there much conversation there or is it just kind of whatever, just enjoy, just there in the moment? It's how well do you know that person? 
Because silence can be golden, but if like I've known you forever, then you and I are probably going to go deep. Hopefully, uh, go go at least a little deep, and then yeah, that is the best part about being with somebody that you trust is that silence is kind of the best. You don't you don't feel like you got to fill the air or whatever, you know? Right. Nice. Yeah, man. Going outside, Marco. I think and just. I don't know, just being with your lady and like maybe letting her do like a point one or something, you know? Like, did you even Ooh. feel a little bit? You know, she's like, oh, yeah. The next time, maybe it's a point two, just to kind of, because that's the kind of stuff that I feel like where you get the little tickle in your spine, you feel a little bit better. You're, it's almost like your posture in a way. Like, you just feel like a better uh, human being. And um, uh, there's something to this, man. I think that's why. Uh, you know, this this should be at the forefront of of your uh, thinking, I guess, or hopefully that's what we hope for 2023 uh, for everybody watching our show is, uh, you know, mental health is just as important as your physical health. And in my opinion, once you get the mental health down, a lot of the other stuff is a lot easier for you because you just feel better in general. And then when your body starts to feel better because you're working out again, you're getting that like double, double win, getting those small percentages each and every day. It shit adds up quick. And I think mushrooms would not only help you with the mental side of things, but it's also helped me kind of relax where like if you're working out a ton, it's almost like your body kind of just re releases a little bit uh, more than, than normal. Um, and a lot of that, I mean, obviously kind of people know how to work out and stuff, but that you know, the, the lactic acid and all those little extra stuff seem to uh, not, not be as, uh, uh, what's the word? Like it, it hurts in a way. Like if you're working out really hard, like that shit hurts there for a while. Uh, yeah. and mushrooms seem to kind of help with that as well. Mm -hmm. Like just re total relaxation. <clears throat> Reset. Yeah. So, uh, Marco, we, you know, some of the things we had mentioned before. Do you want to maybe briefly get into some questions if there are some, and then, uh, uh, you know, um, go about it. Yeah, I was, I've been watching the chat, man. I haven't seen a ton of questions, um, but y'all can get them in there. If y'all if y'all ask questions, go ahead and start popping them in there. Um, people say that growing the mushrooms is just as healing and exciting as taking them. Green table gardens. You know I can I mean? see it's that. Kind of like cannabis, you know what I mean? It's probably even more of a nurturing aspect to the mushrooms. Therapeutic. Yeah, okay. oh, it's very therapeutic. Uh, it's very relaxing while this thing is happening. Everything is still. There's no air moving around like plants in the cannabis dispensary or whatnot. It's just everything is very still and everything is very sterile. Everything is sterile and clean. Like, oh, this is great. Like, I can see how they said, shout out to whoever it is that, that said that. that. That That is definitely nurturing and it really feels great to the body to be um, um, I should say cultivate mushrooms and cannabis and I should say anything um, I have some plants. I don't know if you guys can see some of the plants I have here but I have some um, some nice plants I, you know, I'm just all around anything that grows in dirt or anything like that I'm into it so um, Love it. it's definitely something yeah it kind of it kind of turns into that man like you you know you grow your favorite cannabis or whatever and then you get deeper into the soil and then you start breaking that down and get into the components of the soil and then now you've gone which mushrooms you see over my shoulder is a big part of the soil fungi and then now you say well shit, mushrooms grow well in this cannabis pot well fuck, let me just branch off and grow a different type of mushroom um increase the profit even more and for anybody that just wants to grow mushrooms, period, like if you grow edibles, like they're like, they're gonna be the best mushrooms you've ever had. Ever. Like, yeah, ever, man. You you can't even explain like how good when you slice up some oysters and just cook them up and eat them, how good it tastes. Oh. Um, I was really surprised. You know, that was one thing that shocked me because you always eat mushrooms, they all kind of look the same, but when you actually taste those connoisseur ones, man, it takes you to another level. Oh, and how long you've been growing those mushrooms? I grew them like three years ago for about six or eight months just to kind of do that. I wanted to try it. Um, I didn't really want to dedicate a space to the mushrooms. I kind of didn't, you know, pursue it. And I have, you know, I can do it now if I want. I still got some spawn I need to use before it goes bad. But um, I grew them for a little while, man. But I just kind of took more to the cannabis plant. I, I just wanted to just keep my time and focus there, man. 
But if I got into the, the psychedelics, the side, you know, then I'm sure I'll, I'll probably pick that back up because it's like anything else. I'm going to want to control, you know, the inputs that grow what I'm putting in my body. So that makes perfect sense. And I think somebody asked me, <clears throat> they asked me, say, MJ, if you had a choice, I know, just give me a straight. Yet, what would you do if you could only do one or the other? Which one would you do? I said, what do you mean? And they were like, consume or grow? And they were like, if you could only do one or the other, period, grow or, or consume it, which one it would it be? And I was like, definitely can, uh, definitely the uh, mushrooms because of it has more properties of healing. Uh, for me, this works for me. Now, I ain't talking about everybody, but let's look at it. And let's give it a, a quick uh, flip. So cannabis, it has its properties. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but nothing in cannabis is going to make me feel the way I feel when I take mushrooms. Definitely. Cool. Cannabis is nice. I'll be high, you know, hour, this and that. But you can guarantee when I take these mushrooms, I'm going to be high for eight to 10 hours. Guaranteed. There's no if, ands, and buts. There's no, oh, well, I ate some. No, I'm going to be literally high for eight to 10 hours. So you gotta choose what you gotta choose which what works best for you. You know what I mean? I mean, Definitely. my my best friend. I know what works best for him, but because he's my best friend, does that work best for me? No. What what works best for me is what works. You know, with my body, kidney stones and stuff like that. I hate to bring all that up, but I have kidney stones and all that. And ever since I've been taking mushrooms and cannabis, it's been dwindling down. I don't have to. I don't you know, drop two kidney stones a month. Now it's one every six or eight months. So I got to look at it. Like what, what is really beneficial for me? And the mushrooms definitely are all day and night. Is that, from I, what I, I was just going to say, brother, isn't that like one of the most painful things that a man can go through is, is passing kidney stones like that? Yes. The, one of the most painful things I've ever gone through in life is kidney stone. Yeah, like, a lot of people say that, man. I had one small, tiny when I was younger, and that hurt like a bitch. It was, but nothing like how people describe it these days, like some grown ass man on their knees. Uh, kidney. Them kidney stones. Yeah, down in the fetal position, sweating on a cold ass floor. You got the window open. It's eight below outside, blowing right on you, and you're still sweating. <sighs> And then you go to the doctor and find out that you have a five, uh, 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 a, a number five, uh, what is it, millimeter or centimeter or one of that? That's millimeter. as big as the pee hole, bro. When that thing clogs, and you have a hole in that bad boy. <laughs> you got a big ass stone sitting at the tip of your shit and it won't come out. What the fuck do you do? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. That's real talk, though. That's real life shit, right there, <laughs> young bucks. What do you do? What do you do? You got this marble sticking out of your shit, and it won't come out. Question. When you, well, when you well, get to the doctor do? and they wake. Well, look. When you get to the doctor and they wake you up and tell you what they did, I was like, dude, I was in the house. And they was like, yeah, we know. And they put you in the car. They brought you to the hospital, and here you are, and you're waking up, and it's gone. But boy, when you piss again. Ooh, it's not a great feeling. So my point is, I'm going to do these mushrooms. I'm going to keep continue to grow. I'm going to con keep continue uh, continue to educate myself and others on the benefits of uh, medicinal mushrooms, period. So this doesn't happen again. I don't have to worry about the marble at the tip of my shit no more. You know what I'm saying? I can just go to the bathroom. I don't have to worry about none of that. Definitely. That's key, bro. <laughs> just, yeah, that that's shit makes key. me hurt right now. <laughs> Everybody's just I asked those tight right now. Yeah, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Did he say that? Yeah, he did. But look, yeah, I don't have no more. I can't tell you the last time I, I, I pissed a kidney stone. Now uh, was that did you change your liquid intakes as well? Were you doing a lot of teas and things like that? Or was it just straight shrooms? I was doing mostly just the shrooms to change it. However, I drank a lot of regular tea and the regular tea. Black tea has oxalates in it, and my kidney stones are made out of calcium oxalate. So every time I drink tea, that intensifies it. Tea, soda, chocolate, nuts, and a lot of the green vegetables, rice, starches, and things like that. So there's like five pages of stuff that I cannot eat. So 
I've kind of, you know, after, you know, 20 years, I didn't kind of dwindle it down to only the things I can eat and I venture off here and there, but I could say this, the mushrooms that I take definitely help me with my kidney stones. I don't know what the, what the correlation is, but since I've been taking them, I've been having less kidney stones than before in my last, I'm 53 years old. So I don't for the last two years, I should say it's three years or so, it's definitely been dwindling down one every, you know, six or eight months versus twice a month. I got a call into work because I'm at home like, like I got cramps or something like, you know what I'm saying? Numbers don't lie. <laughs> uh -uh. You know? I don't know. I had heard that that meant like if you have a bunch of kidney stones, your body doesn't absorb calcium correctly. Was that ever like brought up to you? Yes, calcium oxalate. So the body's just finding a way, and and eventually puts it because it needs to put it somewhere, and then it basically just starts to build up these stones. Right? Is that how? Yes. That Remember your kidneys. Your kidneys pull that calcium out of your piss. And what happens is, I think when they don't pull it out, it sits in there and then it crystallizes. Isn't that correct, MJ? Yes. And when you say crystallize, you're both exactly right. When they both, when it crystallizes, you know what rock candy used to look like? That's what a kidney stone looks like. So when, when you go to the doctor, I'm going to say something. When the doctor, when you go ever go to the doctor, they say, do you have blood in your urine? This is one of the symptoms that happens when that kidney passes through your urethra tube down there. It just bounces and sticks on one side. You drink water and it might move and, and touch on the other side. And by the time it gets all the way down to your bladder, dog, you didn't bled out a little bit. Mm, that's very valuable stuff. Makes sense. I remember seeing this show. It was a while ago. I was surprised this technology was existed back then. They use sonic waves to like blast the kidney stones when they're so big that you can't pass them. They were just hitting them with like sound waves and pulverize them. Have you heard that, anything like that, that? Yes, that definitely works. However, I've tried that. Uh, I think my first operation was in 05, and they went in and did that, and then. Uh, I waited some time, and then it was like eight months later, I had to go back and do uh, like a follow-up to kind of see where I was at. And he was like, dude, you got like 80, I think it was like 78 kidney stones in the left kidney, and like it was over 100-something in the right. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, where are they, you know, what's going to happen? Like, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very so important. So it pulverized and, you, and it made like a bunch more and it were able to collect more of the crystals and whatever, right? Exactly. And it wasn't until the second time when I actually had them remove them. So they actually go in. Um, so I had a tube in my side so that the kidney stones could drop through the tube instead of scarring up my urethra tube or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um so I had the surgery. They go in with the scope and the uh, whatever it is to hold it open. They go in and just pull them out. But that's fine and dandy. But until you piss, it's like you grab grab some sand in your hand from a sand you know a sand pit and just grab it and just just let the sand just slowly just pour out of your hand. You know how long that takes. Now imagine you trying to piss all them damn pebbles out of your shit. God damn, bro. I'm sorry. You, I mean, I'm we're, I, hey, look, man, we're laughing, but I'm it's sorry. It's funny to me because I'm thing. like, how did I ever get to this point? And more importantly, I'm going to get man. to that point where I'm going to tell y'all it's because of the mushrooms together with the cannabis in the last three years, my kidney stones have went down like 80%. So I only have one, one little thing that goes around uh, maybe once every six or eight months, and that's it. So I'm definitely staying on my mushrooms, man. Definitely. And if you got hey, try it, shit, another benefit. Have you, I mean, any downside at all? I mean, really, right? Nothing except that next day you got to get a little rest and get your shit back together. Yeah, uh, that's it. That's the only really downside I see is that next day. Um, so before I go to bed at night when I'm done tripping, whatever that is, I'll take a B, I'll take, what is that, vitamin B12? Mm -hmm. Chewable. Boom. I wake up, I'm ready to rock again. I'm ready to go. I ain't, Land down with the that couch. yellow piss, that fire yellow, that, that bright yellow piss. Ooh, look, put your glasses on before you go use the bathroom. It's gonna startle the shit out of you. 
Remember back in the day, you got a little pill with the uh, detox drink, and that was supposed to like because you drank all that water, so it was mm-hmm. supposed to yellow it back up. That's uh, another. That's <laughs> besides the little yellow piss, and you know, feeling a little groggy and a little tired the next day. I don't see and any downfalls. Exactly. Good stuff. The only down, the real downfall is you not taking up shit. <laughs> well, how about this too? Sometimes people will get into uh, their micro dosing, MJ. And then when you start to see them, and like I've even visited people at work and stuff before, where it's like, I can tell you are lit. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yes. It's like <laughs> micro dosing has turned into getting lit every single uh, every day or every other day. So I think you got to kind of watch that too. You know, like it, it is fun, it's enjoyable, uh, but it should be used um, you know, sparingly. Yeah, and sparingly, especially at first. You know, yeah. and there's, there's no like real rush to this. This is something you can do for the rest of your life. So there's no need to rush it. You know, it's a it's a journey for real. Naturally, you can do this. And like I think somebody touched on it earlier real quick, uh, said, yeah, they're undetected. So, yeah, you can go down and, you know, if you get a piss test or whatever, like, oh, wow, damn, these mushrooms are short. But damn, that damn weed did. Done. Yeah. Yeah, or the the homies could do like cocaine on Thursday night and pass that shit on Monday. Right. Or you smoke a little joint, and go to work on Monday morning, and they act like you're over there, like uh, you can't handle your workload and stuff. Right. So they, they, it's like, man, that shit was Friday night. Like I don't right. even. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't even know what I ate Friday, but she here this Monday. I'm ready to work. What's up? Yeah. What's up? Well, well cool. shit, man. Yeah, yeah let's uh. You know, I appreciate everything, Michael. And, uh, you know, as, as things progress and people probably get better at this, I would imagine they probably have more advanced questions for you. Um, and like I said, I think I think doing this, is, again, that's why we want to kick off the, the year with this. Uh, in my opinion, this might be a way for certain men to be able to do this themselves, grow this for themselves, deal with shit on the, you know, internally without having to really share certain things with people. Uh, and find like real peace, you know, especially when you're younger, you might have done certain things, taken things from people or how, whatever you did that probably put a lot of bullshit karma on your plate. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's what I think is best about mushrooms mm-hmm. is, again, it takes away, like we've said a couple of times now, like the material world, the, the things that seem to really fucking matter that goes away for a few hours. And it's the, the background stuff, the trees looking up at the stars, whatever you're doing, it, looking up at the sky, looking down at the soil. Uh, things that you normally don't actually even do anymore for whatever reason, man, when you're on mushrooms and you're kind of enjoying the moment, that's the kind of stuff that you like to look at. Um, so it just kind of, I don't know, maybe re re lets the brain rethink like what, what's maybe some of the, also the purpose of us being here is probably to explore this. And in my opinion, it's to also explore the mind while we're here to try to try to see where, uh, where we can go. Mm-hmm. Mental health is important, man. I think with mushrooms, it's going to answer all the questions. You could talk to a psychiatrist and your best BF, whoever, all day and night, but no one's going to give you the truth like them damn mushrooms. Like I was telling you, my adult son, he was sitting there crying like he was fearing. He's like, dude, I fear I can do anything now. Like, you back? You good? He's like, yeah, I'm good. Like, he kind of broke it down. Like, I feel great. Like, there's nothing bad. Nowhere near me is I feel great. That's all I can say. So I would say everybody definitely needs to revisit or think about it. If not, educate yourself. Go look, go on IG, go and drop in somebody's uh, I, uh, their messaging. Ask questions. Don't go off of what someone else said. Go off of what you know, meaning go and do your research on your own and figure it out. Ask some questions and go from there. Open up your mind in 2023, people. Let's do this. Hell yeah. Great words, man. This has been a great show, man. I, I love talking to I love talking to people that have that actual experience. You know what I mean? You can always tell when someone just has just read the book and they got to spit that back out. But when you have those extra tidbits, you know, the corn, you know, the mason jar with the lid upside down, those are things that you only learn from experience. So... I mean, I think this show is going to be one that I will play back. I don't always watch them because I don't have time, but you were dropping some bombs, man. And the way you made it seem so simple to kind of get into the mushrooms. I hope some people 
um, give it a shot. If not for the um, psychedelics starting out, start with some food mushrooms. You know what I mean? Yes. Feed your body. Feed, you know, you still won't get that fungi in you. Um, and then you can work on the mind when you get ready. But, um, man, thank you. Thank you, uh, MJ. I appreciate you coming, man, sharing everything. And I definitely I'm going to be uh, looking for you when I get back on IG, linking up with you, brother. And um, definitely staying in touch, man. Marco, appreciate you, my brother. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure to be on here with you two legends, you and Brian, damn it. Um, it's been a great day. Um, I've been playing, playing, um, playing this in back in my head all day. Like, what are you going to say? And I was like, you know what? Let me take some mushrooms. And they told me, you know what? Just be yourself, bro. Just go in there and talk and be yourself. Don't have to go out and re remember all kind of extra stuff like Brian touched in on. Just go and be yourself. Enjoy yourself. And hopefully somebody will listen and they can spread some positivity to someone else that's going to need it. And Brian, you my dog, man. I've, I've, you know, I've been knowing you for a while now. Shit. I, uh, we retouched bases. We found each other again. I said like some lost kids in, in high school or something like that. But I can say going forward, man, we got we got some things to do. Shit. Let's get it going. You know, I am. Let's go. Yeah, actually, uh, like uh, behind the scenes, you know, I'm gonna, we, we need to go to dinner and stuff. It's great to see. It's like, it is like seeing like an old like college friend or somebody you hadn't seen in a really long time. Um, and just to see how happy you are and stuff, you know, and I think um, I guess that's what I'm also learning at later in life, buddy, with the, the, with the karma and stuff is there's, there's there's a huge difference between being happy and being joyful. And it seems like people that are, are focused on being joyful, shit comes their way. But, you know, they, they deal with it however they deal with it and they keep it moving. And MJ, you, uh, you know, you're a beacon for that, man. I, I think uh, it's, it's something that's helped me behind the scenes when I wanted to, you know, we, we, we know a lot of the same people. And sometimes people uh, don't, ha you know, hold themselves up to the way that you thought they would. Um, and, and that fucks with you when you think you thought you figured, not figured somebody out, but thought you could trust somebody enough to do certain things. So that's why I brought up like, you know, doing the seed hoarders, even though it wasn't really something that we could monetize. Uh, I just like the fact that we were thinking like that back in the day, buddy, uh, because, you know, being an entrepreneur now is fantastic. And uh, back then I don't even, you know, I wouldn't have known even what business was, how to build an e-commerce website. We still had issues, everybody, before we started the show on all of us trying to figure out our IT, you know, so we, we're still trying to put the, put this stuff together as we go because the technology is the young bucks game. Um, and I think you, you know, the ones that obviously understand the tech part, it's MJ's and, and Marco's and, and people like them uh, that have the knowledge that you need to really, you know, take a moment, sit back, put your time into. And then I know from, uh, from firsthand, you know, experience with mushrooms uh, that that can change your life and change the outlook on your life. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a fast fix, uh, but it's definitely something that's worth putting in the time and effort um, because you're going to get something like in 90 days. I always feel like that's the that's the point. Like if you can stick to something 90 days, you're probably going to end up doing it. And if you're just doing this like every couple of weeks, I mean, that's that's more than beneficial. It definitely is, man. Everybody get out there, do your research. Let's try these mushrooms and please stay tuned. All right, Marco, you got anything else? Or uh, London, appreciate your time, sir. No, I'm good. What do you got? Y'all got a show tomorrow? The chat was asking. Uh, no, uh, we got to, I got to talk with Leighton on that and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, behind the scenes, um, okay. we'll see. Oh, so last sad. thing, last thing. I got a shirt for y'all. Sorry, it was a little late, but I'm going to go pick them up shortly. I got uh, the OG shirt. red ones. Yeah. I tried oh, to find I got white and black. Oh. I got white and black this time. All right. Boom. I'll take white and black. I was trying to find that, man. I was going to wear that one. That I old school red it. and black. Yeah, I remember. With education over eagles, your favorite saying, bro. Yeah, man. That's what I meant. Like, today's memory lane, dude. And, you know, now that we can kind of just monetize things without having to have that monkey on your back, that's why I just enjoy being able to talk like this, talk with Marco. doesn't matter. You know, we got our boy London, uh, you know, really building things behind the scenes uh, all over. So, uh, a lot, yeah, man, a lot's going on uh, for the Future Cannabis Project. There's so many people that are starting to come on and have shows, uh, you know, legends. Uh, London's had a, a variety of legends on the shows. Uh, so, again, you know, it's it's nice to be able to maybe take an hour 
especially when you're trimming. That was that was where I was always trying to focus, even though it was like self improvement shit, or if it's like uh, you know cannabis improvement. You know, especially when you get into it, man, self improvement's hard. I think for some people to, to try to, but the karma aspect is the self improvement that I really bought into. I think there's something right. to that, and and putting good into the the world, uh, it comes back. You know, it comes back to you in spades, and it's some that uh, we should be telling everybody about. Because once you feel it, life is meant to be abundant, and it's meant to be abundant for you and your family. You just got to get on that vibration. Speaking of family, shout out nephew. Got his own little clothing uh, brand he came up with, Nitty's Boutique. My brother's uh, nickname was Nitty, so uh, nephew came up with that. He turned 22 yesterday, so uh, I yeah, love young it, Young hustler. Yeah, yeah he's hustling. hustling. He got his little clothing, you know, kind of emulates the WWE. I said, hold on now, don't get too big. Now they might come after you. So um, cease and desist. Yeah. Right, right, right. But he just he took that and ran with it. So I like it, man. I want to give him a shout out. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you. Shout out to MJ. Uh, we're talking clothing. As far as I know, this is one of one. I, I wear it proudly like it costs a million bucks. Uh, and I, uh, I appreciate that day, buddy, when we were having fun. And I said, I, it looks dope. And you literally gave me the hat off your head. You know, so a lot of people say that. Oh, this guy gave the shirt off his back. You literally did that, man. I'll never forget that. I think you're an unbelievable human being. Uh, and I hope nothing but success for you, brother. I appreciate you, Brian. You're the only one I know that still has a hat. And I love it. Appreciate you, man. I always give my hat off to you, London. Marco, anybody else? I don't even got to know you, but if we come in contact and we vibe together, you got what I got, brother. Yeah, 100. Definitely. Same here, bro. Appreciate you. All right, London, you have any uh, plugs or anything with the shows? And then get on. I have stuff coming. I just wanted, like, I have some stuff going up on the next couple days. Just check out the links in the stuff in the description. Um, to make sure to like help and support these these guys, these beautiful people. There's going to be a few things that you'll see coming up, and I don't want there to be too many any surprises. So I'm going to give you a little heads up. We're working on trying to like you know these beautiful human beings that come on and spend this time and all the all the hours that they do in the research to make sure to get great guests on and have amazing conversations and to do these things is it takes a lot of time and effort out of their their, their life and and i appreciate the hell out of that. So we're we're hoping to try and find some support for that type of thing. So you'll see a few things that'll that'll happen in the next little bit to try and, you know, help fund that and, and, and bring this without having to make a Patreon or something where you guys have to pay or go behind a paywall. We want, we want to support the community as much as possible. Um, so you'll see a little, couple little things and little bits and changes that you do. It's still the great, same great show, still the same awesome content. Nothing, nothing's going to change that much, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up and to check out. Um, I got a lot of fun content coming up in January, so you'll see some some new drops and fun things happening, as well as as my whole trip to Europe and that that tour over. Because I I'll, I'll be excitedly, uh, in, I guess in six or eight episodes, guys, I'll be doing it from my villa or or from some villa in Italy. Really? I think. What? <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. It'll be in Spanish. Yeah, I got an acre in in. In, in, in the south and i'm hoping to be at spanibus and, and a whole bunch of stuff so i'm like i'm excited to spend this next year with you guys journeying through Love the through, through my thing and doing what it is uh i i'm looking forward to it so thank you shout out and, shout out and, london and happy yeah. growing you. nice we worldwide baby we've been saying that <laughs> worldwide worldwide that makes me think of that worldwide prestige. <laughs> right, I'm going I'm I'm to push the button. Boats and hoes. Thank yeah. you. Man. Appreciate you guys. Go. See you next week.